What is going on, folks? Hello, hello. How are you? Welcome to the Flight Sim Broadcasting Network. My name is Jason. I'll be your guide today, your tour guide. Um, let me know if you can hear me. So give me a 5x5 five five before we start. And uh, we're going to get this show on the road here. Once I get a good 5x5, five five, good. Um, uh, I mean, who's checking in? Let's see who's checking in. We've got, um, yeah, I think it is. What's going on, man? Uh, Pops is in the house. Sean, hello. Hopefully you're feeling better, Sean. Uh, we've got Kaiser, I think. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Maxwell, what's going on? He says, even Jason. Jason. Hurricanes hitting the West Coast. Have you heard about it? I have. Um, it, 
I have my th it's gonna shut down Las Vegas, folks. So if you live in Nevada, good luck. Uh, hopefully you don't flood, but I think you. I, it's gonna be nasty, right? It's gonna, they're they're estimating like four inches of rain, and anything in the desert just sheds right off. That it doesn't it doesn't absorb. So I know the airport's gonna close. Something's gonna happen uh, over there. I hope, I hope that doesn't happen, but it will. If 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 it it's predicted, it. I mean that's what these clouds are. You're seeing right above that the aircraft. Same kind of thing. Uh, and then I've got everybody else. So hopefully I want to just thank everybody for, for tuning in, checking us out. Today we're doing something different. It's going to be a, a, a lot more laid back than our normal streams are. Usually when we stream, uh, we're streaming coastal airways and it's obviously we, we simulate line operations. But today we're going to have some fun today. It's going to be a nice laid back flight. Uh, <laughs> I haven't looked at the weather. We're using real world weather. So we're going to check that out before we fly. Uh, we are going to be flying the Seneca 5 34T. It's a beautiful aircraft. Uh, two, the engines are uh, two Continental engines in it. I believe they're driving 340 horsepower each, and it is turbocharged. So we could climb pretty darn high in this airplane, and that's kind of what we're going to do today. We might go VFR on top, but I'm going to show you kind of all the ins and outs of a VFR flight. I have flown this aircraft in real life. It's heavy on the flight controls, but I love the airplane, right? Seneca is, is built by Piper, and it's just a solid, it's a tank. Anything by Piper is, is built like a tank. They just do they just do really, really good good work on their aircraft, uh, small general aviation airplanes. And I hear the wind blowing hard, so <laughs> this is going to be fun. It's probably going to be a little bit bumpy up there. A lot, a lot of these rain bands coming in from the hurricane. I don't know if it made landfall yet, so we're going to check all that out. Uh, that's kind of what we'll do first is we'll look at uh, weather and then we'll go from there okay we'll look at weight and balance weather everything that I, I'm going to take you into a, a VFR flight we're going to check out so let's do this first thing we're going to do uh, we're going to fly up to Boise now Boise is about two hours and I'd say about two hours and 30 something minutes away uh, it's a, it's probably about two hours and sixteen minutes on this aircraft. We're gonna probably be cruising at about 170 if we can get there. Uh, we'll see. Well, again, it, it just really depends on weather and what we've got, and, and really it could change us to an IFR flight. So let's see. Let's see what we got first. Anytime you're planning a flight, I always like to go to the progs first, like prog chart. What are we looking at? What's the overall picture here? High level altitude stuff. We've got some embedded stuff right there. We're looking at the jet stream is coming up from the south. There's the hurricane right there. Um, so it's just hitting the Cabo San, uh, Cabo San Lucas down here. But this is hitting the Baja, Mexico area. Uh, Hillary. So I'm expecting some rain bands coming through. Maybe some wind. Uh, maybe the wind's picking up a little bit. So we'll check that out here in just a little bit. Let's see what we've got. So I like to kind of scroll down and then pull up this. There's a hurricane. It's well off. Uh, it's well, it's hitting probably Cabo as we speak, which is right here. Okay, they're getting some some feeling some wind, for sure. Probably won't affect us all the way up here just yet, but it will. We got a nice high pressure off of Nevada, which that's going to give way to this low that's coming in this hurricane. But we got this occluded front coming through, so that might bother us a little bit. We'll see. The route of flight, really, we're going to take off from this little lake area and go straight up to Boise, and we've got a nice warm front here as well coming through. So Boise might be a little hairy, uh, probably expecting some. I'm looking at the isobars here. They're pretty far apart, but they're very close in pressure. So I'm not expecting too drastic of a change between a high and low. So nothing that would really pop out right now. Maybe a little instability. Especially up here, as it's low pressure, you're going to suck stuff up. It's going to lift. Plus, you've got the mountains that lift already. So we've got terrain lifting, and we have pressure as well. So both of those things uh, probably going to be issues for us. So let, let's just see what's going on. I like to go from here, and then I drop into any of the SIGMAT or AIRMATS uh, issues that pop up. And I could just kind of click on this, and you could see we got thunderstorms here. Just probably our route of flights looking pretty good, at least in terms of SIGMETs. Let's look at air mats. That's probably going to be our turbulent areas um, and all that good stuff. 
So if I click turbulence, let's say turbulence, what do we got? I mean, it's convectivity down here. Same with this. This is just convective stuff. Uh, air mats coming through turbulence high. So that's good. We've got 24 to 43. That won't affect us. So that's really good. Okay, so that's good. Turbulent wise, it's going to be bumpy because it's hot outside, but uh, we're flying low enough where we'll, we'll, we'll expect the earth heating to, to affect the aircraft. So uh, anytime you're in the low level flight levels and the heat in the summer, expect those thermals to bounce you around. It's just going to happen. Uh, let's go to. Uh, let's take a look at the TAF. TAF report coming through. Uh, let's check Boise really quick just to see. If Boise's kind of crap, then we know we're going to have to file an IFR flight plan. But you can see right now what's going on. And time wise, it's a 0110 Zulu. So uh, it is the 20th. It will be. It is the 20th now. So. 0110 so this is you take a look at how to read this thing temporarily from 20 that's that's today the 20th just changed over in utc that's how we, we measure this zero zero zulu which was an hour ago to, to the 20th to zero two okay so we're looking at about an hour here two hour difference vertebral at 15 gusting 35 light thunder showers and rain and broken at 10,000 with cumulonimbus thunderstorms right. we're not forecasted to land until if we take off here in about 30 minutes let's say so 130 30 we'll get there about 3:30, give or take all right so let's take a look at this one right there all right that's kind of what i'm again hour before hour after right in this range we got to keep zero two in there but it's more like zero three thirty so zero three thirty you go zero two thirty to zero four thirty right in that range all right one four zero at six greater than six broken at fifteen that's really good for us and then this one obviously there's light showers so showers are lingering in the boise area but i'm really concerned with those thunderstorms right so that's one of those things but the forecast is is looking favorable for us that we could fly ifr for sure um Let's take a look at the METAR, see what's actual going on right now. Nine miles visibility, a few clouds, uh, 28 over 13, 2983, that's pretty good. So that's VFR. So right now it's favorable for us. And let's take one look at the peak at the radar here and see what's going on. Yeah, there's the bands. So if you're if you're wondering what the heck's what the heck this is from, this is from the hurricane. So you can see you can't see anything south because we don't have any radar south from here, it's all Mexico. But um, We'll, we'll take a look at on the actual uh, Navigraph charts, and we'll see all this. This is all these bands coming through. Actually, this blob is. This right here is definitely effects from the storm. You've got the low pressure here. Uh, this is what we're concerned with. So let's just zoom into this puppy and see what we got. So this whole thing's moving north. We're going to have to get the heck out of Dodge here quick. Um, or we're going to be right smack dab middle under this thunderstorm that's approaching from the south. So uh, that could be an issue for sure. Uh, let's see. Let's just take a look really quick at the METAR in Salt Lake and see what we got. It's be about 30 minutes before we're airborne. So, which, if we can get out. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is going to be ugly right now. I mean, right now it's uh, at the thunderstorms here. It's 16028 gusting, 41, 7 miles visibility, light uh, thunder showers and rain, broken at uh, 8,500, broken at 18,000. Yeah, 23 over 20, altimeter 0, uh, 0, uh, 3003. And then over here, you've got pressure, visibility, occasional, we're looking at visibility south, southeast, 2.5 miles, occasional lightning in cloud, cloud. Uh, lightning, cloud to cloud, that's what that is. And then we have uh, the thunderstorms east south, thunderstorms east south, east to south, moving north. It's coming right at us, right? Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we got thunderstorms right over Salt Lake. So what we could do is we get that out of the way. All right, we know what kind of weather we've got in terms of what to expect. Uh, I do want to see what we're looking at 18,000, broken at 85. Okay. 
Uh, we could kind of see, if I point the uh, nose to the south, you can see those thunderstorms right there. That's where they are. Well, let's see if we can sneak out, though. We'll see. Two socks, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Hopefully you're doing well. Let's, um, we'll continue as normal, and we'll see if we can't get a... It's, it's windy. I, I can tell it's windy. Let's see. Uh, we got to program the aircraft and all that stuff, so by the time we're done with that, we might get lucky uh, and get out of here, but we'll we'll kind of see. Let's jump in the airplane. This is the Seneca 5 from Coronado, so this is a, a beautiful rendition of the aircraft. It's gorgeous. Another thing you have to do with any type of airplane, including jets, is weight and balance. You always got to do weight and balance. So... I'm going to pull it up for you, and we're going to take a look at our weight and balance charts. Here we go. This is from the Seneca 34 Tango. This is kind of what we've got. We're, I planned 80 gallons of fuel on board. Uh, we've got about two and a half hours of flight, so, uh, you know, we could go a little higher if we wanted to. I think we could top out about 90, and I think we ought to. Maybe we fill it up uh, just because of this weather. It's kind of crappy, so let's go ahead and just pop in. Uh, let's pop in about 98 gallons here. Let's just top it off. I think, I think we're going to be all right if we do that. So we'll put in 90 gallons, 98 gallons of fuel. So almost full, full tanks today. Um, forward bags is 20 pounds. The pilot's going to be 201. The pilot number two is going to be 100. And then we're looking at, uh, 150, 87. I think that's going to be a little too much on the weight. So let's go ahead and pull that weight out. And then this is out. So we'll take our two dogs in the back at 87 and 98, uh, way in the back of the aircraft. And that puts us at, well, we'll trip fuel about 300 pounds. So we're going to burn 300 pounds, nothing in the aft. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at here. So we're looking good. The arms are good. Uh, landing weight is going to be right around 4,000. Let's take a look at the CG chart here. And we're within the envelope. It's tight, but we're within the envelope. So that's how you can tell our moment. And we're right where we need to be. Our moment's about 392. The arm is 89.3. So the CG is sitting 89 after the datum. That's kind of where we are. Uh, on the moment, I'm sorry. The moment is right there, 392. Uh, our CG arm is 89. So we are right where we need to be. We're pretty high on the weight but we're right within our limits. So we're good to go on this aircraft. That's how you know you're okay. Uh, every airplane has one of those where you have to do weight and balance charts the whole nine yards. What's the cost of this plane? You know, Pops, uh, if somebody can look that up for us, it's probably going to be pushing, I would say, maybe 150000 You can get an early Seneca for cheap. I mean, when I say cheap, I mean, you know, maybe 150. dollars so cost of a boat, I'm, I'm assuming. But uh, you'll see the performance. The performance in this aircraft, just absolutely, it's beautiful, right? It's a really, really good airplane. Heavy on the flight controls, but uh, if it's like that in real life, too. It's very heavy. All right, so what I'm going to do is let's take a look at the Navigraph charts. And we'll kind of see the route of flight we're, how we planned. And Anytime you're flying a VFR flight, there's a lot of to go. I think IFR is so much easier than VFR any day just because of the airspace and all those things. This is our route of flight, so we're going to go over Great Salt Lake, kind of get away from these thunderstorms, uh, and then up into the Boise area. Um, so let's drill down. I'm going to zoom into this, and we're going to see airspace. Now, Salt Lake International is here, and obviously you folks know Class Bravo airspace. You've got to get clearance to go into and out of the Class Bravo airspace. Now today, we're cool because we're right here. Bountiful Air Park is sitting right about the shelf of the Class Bravo, right, which means that where the Class Bravo starts. I want you to think of the Class Bravo as an upside-down upside wedding cake, okay? So it's right at the surface. It's like straight up surface all the way up to a certain altitude then it expands and then it goes up and it expands goes up kind of like that so it's not just a big column it's an upside down winning cake that's how this class bravo looks um because of the mountains it's not per perfect per perfectly round so it's a little different and you've got to kind of zoom in to see where the class bravo starts and where it stops so right now on um, where we're sitting it starts at 7500 feet and it stops at 12,000. 
So we can't just blast to 13,000 feet. We're going to have to stay at that 7,500 feet, probably 6,000 foot range, till we can get out of the class Bravo. And what we're going to do is fly northbound straight out, okay, depending on where the run, where the weather is. Um, I'd like to go north and stay away from those thunderstorms. Uh, we're going to definitely kind of follow the bay here. This is the Great Salt Lake. It's actually Farmington Bay on this, this side. So we're going to kind of go up to the lagoon. We'll catch the lagoon, and then we're going to come across. And then again, we want to keep it, you see this, below 6,000 feet. So this corridor here, we want to kind of stay out of this because we're going to be at 6,000 feet, but that's where the Class Bravo starts. So we want to be below that. We're going to fly up just a little higher than that, and then we're going to cut across, okay? And then we can stay right around 7,500. We'll stay at 6,000. Again, we have broken clouds at 8,500. So we got to re remain clear of clouds if we're flying VFR. Now we can request an IFR flight plan if VATSIM controllers come online. Uh, right now, we are on VATSIM. We will be on VATSIM flying a VFR flight. You can see right through here, this ring, now it starts at 7,812. So we're going to keep it, again, probably could climb up to about 7,500 feet here and get a little more relief. And now we can blast off out of here, right? Now we can start climbing to 13,000, um, taking a look at any um, kind of restrictions. We don't have any restrictions here. This is going to be... This is Willard Bay area. And then we're going to just kind of fly this heading 26 miles. We're going to fly these waypoints. Obviously, I'm going to show you Dead Reckoning 2. There's, it's really hard to Dead Reckon in here because there's not much going on. It's just mountains. So we're going to have the GPS to help us out. We'll go to Burley, Idaho. That's going to be one of our alternates. If we need to bail out, that's where we'll bail out. Uh, we got Twin Falls as well we could take. And then we're going to go pretty much straight across. We'll follow the Snake River here. I think this is the Snake River right to um, Boise, right? And up, excuse me, Mountain Home, and then Boise is just north of that right there. So that's where we are. That's kind of our plan. We've got a couple of cool um, spots to look at and things. And so right now, let's go ahead and look at the weather. All right, you can see the radar is wicked. And it's going to come right on top of us. It's right there now, and it's pushing to the north. Um, we could stay below this weather, though, folks. We could stay below it. We might be in good shape. So uh, I'm just going to try to sneak out. How's that? Let's try to sneak out, kind of climb through this. Uh, no delay, though? Oh, shoot. Here comes the rain. So I think we're stuck. I mean, at least in terms of we still might be able to go VFR. So... We might need IFR, but uh, again, if we had to, we can. All right, let's get in the airplane. A couple of things we're going to do. Yeah. She could come in here. Come on, Anna. Hey, you got to pull this. Pull this. I wouldn't have thrown that. <sighs> Hang on. My dog's... Oh, don't bring him in here. He'll knock stuff down. My puppy is huge. He's like... 87 pounds right now and he's like a bulldozer he just runs into everything okay thank you you're gonna stay there all right good they're playing and fighting and all sorts of stuff so we're just kind of i don't want to get rained on let's gonna close this window all right now as you can see outside the aircraft ooh, it's nasty <laughs> um, outside the aircraft you can see it's ugh, it's getting ugly folks so hopefully we can beat this we'll see oh gosh anyway we'll see we're hooked up to ground power so it's good we'll use the ground power to turn on the aircraft and then we'll go from there let's go in and shut all the doors and stuff uh, let me turn the air, uh, the camera around here so you can see kind of what the what the cabin looks like this is this is kind of the baggage hold we're sitting in. So you can see it's it sits six people, right? Two, four, six. So six, six. It seats six passengers in this airplane. Um, we're gonna go ahead and shut the doors. Again, Coronado does does a great job with modeling all of that. We've got a table out here that they they could uh, passengers could play cards, whatever. 
Um, cool stuff. Oh, that dog cannot be in here. This little guy is going to have to go. So, no thank you. Um, all right, let's jump in the flight deck. We're going to shut the window here, shut the door. All right. Okay, now like anything, you got to run checklists. And so we're going to do that now. Let me see. Yeah, he can't be in here. This, this guy's going to drive me crazy. The little guy drives me crazy. The big guys, they don't drive me crazy. The little ones do. The bark just, it's like grades on me. You know what I mean? Just us. I don't know what it is. The yippy dogs is kind of just, oh, never again. I will not buy another, I'll not get another dog under 150 pounds. <laughs> I just won't do it. Uh, anyway, the dog sounds mean. Yeah, he's a, and that's another thing. He got the small guy syndrome, you know what I mean? The small dogs, I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, folks, let's go ahead and, and get this going. We're going to turn on the normal procedures. I'll show you uh, the manual and kind of what to expect. Uh, hang on. Yeah, thanks, bud. You know, uh, Scott, this is going to be a relaxed flight, but we got this thunderstorm coming over the top of us now. Is it hitting you guys yet? It's probably passing you. You're you're south, aren't you? Man, this thing is rocking and rolling. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to beat it. I could beat it to the north. It just depends. We're going to probably have to take off into the wind. So it's a bummer. All right, so I'm going to go through this right here. Uh, I do, I'm just going to turn on the power. What the, what the crap is going on here? What's the matter? You right? Well, I can't help you, so we're kind of stuck. Um, so we're going to skip the pre-flight. We've already done that. You know, we've looked at it. We'll take everything off the aircraft, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So the pre-flight comes in. That's the cool thing about A2A. You got to kind of walk. Up. This is not an A2A aircraft, but if it was an A2A aircraft, you got to walk around and uh, actually look at things, which we'll do. We're gonna keep the power on. Ground power, that is, because I'm gonna use the ground power. We're gonna power up the GPS. We'll arm the GPS and we'll do it that way. Okay. It's you can see it's bumpy. So what I'll do up on the overhead, we're gonna turn on the master switch first. Okay, I mean, look at that. The prop's spinning. That's how fast the wind is kicking right now. That's that's not good, folks. That's You're talking 40 knot winds <laughs> if that's happening to you. That is not good. Uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't commanded to do that. So, anyway, this ought to be interesting. Okay, we're going to come over here. We're going to throw the radio switch to the on position. What that is going to do is power up our GPS. And we do have onboard weather radar. Can you believe that this airplane has weather radar in the 737? Where's that? Um, Scott says, we got quite of a light show the other night. It's been fairly tame on the west bench tonight. Okay. Uh, you were supposed to shout out clear. Yeah, exactly. Um, are these flying conditions safe? Yeah, Um. well... The, the good news is, no, I mean, I'm not going to fly in a thunderstorm. I won't, I won't do that to you. But what I am going to do is power the GPS up. And we're going to get the flight plan program. I'm going to show you this GPS. This is the GPS uh, GN, I think it's GNS uh, 750, I think, 730. If you go to, I think it's the PMS 50. If you type in PMS 50 right now just on, your, on the website, you could see... They have this add-on for the, like this aircraft and a couple airplanes they do. And I, I really love this uh, this GPS. So what we can do is start the GPS at least, get it going on the flight plan, and then hopefully this weather kind of passes us to the north. And yes, we're going to have to avoid it 
on a way out, but there's no way I, I'm going to fly in, in a thunderstorm. So right now, we'll just have to kind of wait. But as we wait, we can be efficient, if that makes sense. So we are going to fly. No, I won't fly you through a thunderstorm. Okay? We're going to try to avoid that at all costs. Okay. So what we'll do right now is you can see a couple things. This is actually linked up to... Uh, a Navigraph. So if you have a Navigraph subscription, you can link this up to your charts, which is really nice. So if you click charts, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we could see. And I'm really going to be focused on the first one here. Uh, I'll go back, click utilities, and then map. And everything there that we need is overlaid. And I could go in quicker and you could see the same thing we were looking at with all of the different air spaces is reflected on the GPS, which is really nice. So let's go back, okay, and we're going to go back another one. Now we have options. This is our main web uh, page. We have map, traffic, terrain, weather, which is insane, right? So we could click on the weather. You can see the weather band right there. We'll turn this on, and we do actually have onboard weather radar as well. So we could scan horizontal. We could, you know, different modes. This guy's got to go. He's going to drive me crazy hang on let me text let me text them we, we're not going to use that kind of weather we're going to use our onboard weather radar and we'll go from there but you could see if i go click flight plan i want to show you how to do this uh, this guy's got to go hang on stand by one where's the phone Where's my messages when I need them? All right. So set origin. We're going to go ahead and click that. Uh, Thibs, what's going on? And he says, I don't even fly GA that much. If any, maybe once a quarter. But the plane is... Pulling at my heartstrings already. Might have to give this one a go. I wait till we wait till we fly it. You're really gonna love it. All right. So what we're gonna do is type in Kilo Bravo Tango Fox, I think, Bountiful Air Park, and that's Sky Park. That's right. I just texted them like he's gotta go. Um, because I I don't want to get up. <laughs> Once I'm in the seat, I really don't want to get up. Let me try. Um, Another one. Alright, so Bountiful Air Park, that's what we want to do. We're just going to click Enter. And that's the uh, departure airport. Our destination airport is going to be Kilo Bravo Oscar India. B-O-I or Boise. Oh, that ain't going to work. So let's go ahead and go backspace. It's going to search for it. Boise Air Terminal. That is correct. We'll click enter. So you have your departure and your arrival. Now, what we'll do from this point is we're going to put in our waypoints from here. Yeah, this is ugly. Oh, man. Let's hope this starts dissipating. I don't, I, it, that's pretty nasty. Thank you. Um, we gotta, we're going to have to do something. Maybe we can bail out straight across to the west. I mean, it's over us right now. There's no way I'm flying yet. So, But our first waypoint is going to be VPLGN. So VPLGN will do... I'm going to turn on my other iPad so I can see it here. VPLGN. Let's go ahead and I'm going to just mount this. Whoa. Okay. And that's why, folks, I have an external GPU on the aircraft because of this very thing. If you didn't have a GPU and you started right now, you're burning precious fuel, right? You got to start thinking, and fuel is money and a lot of money. So it's add a waypoint, VPLGN. So I'm going to go VPLGN. I do love this. Um, 
VP LGN. I just want to make sure that's that's Lagoon. It's called VP LGN. You're there. Good. Click Enter. All right. It's about 7.2 nautical miles from us, so we've got the right one. We're going to click another waypoint and VP MSH. VP MSH. Now this is kind of if you're thinking. Wait a minute, Jason, this is a VFR flight. You're right, this is a VFR flight. However, we're going to back up the VFR with GPS, right? It's going to it's going to help us dead reckon as well as know where their airspace limitations are and everything else. All right, our next point is going to be over to the north as we push through here in Mont, M O I N T. Now we could fly a VOR outbound, but again, this is a great dead reckoning waypoint and we're going to talk about that. M-O-I-N-T. We'll go ahead and plug that in there. And then we'll click Enter. And you can see it's 22 nautical miles. And we're going to keep going. Okay, our next one is going to be Switz. S-W-I-T-Z. And the reason why, I'll show you, why we are doing what we're doing. We can't just blast off. I know what you're going to say. Well, why don't we just cut through this? This is an MOA area. Military operations. We want to stay away from the MOAs, uh, especially if they're active. I don't think this is active, but you'd have to look at this MOA. Okay? Now you barely can see it on the chart, but I can look on my sectional chart and really dig in, and I think it's going to be right there. If I click it, you could see if it, is it active or not. Okay? and the airspace and where it starts and where it ends or you could just avoid it altogether and that's what I'm going to do so we're going to avoid it again we've got a really good dead reckoning point right up here we're going to fly right through this valley sheer S -H -O -S -W -I -T -Z we're going to do first S -W -I -T -Z. I don't think I put that in there yet no so we're going to just kind of scroll down add a waypoint S -W -I -T -Z. There you go. And then we're just going to click enter. All right, here's another waypoint coming in after Swiss. We're going to go to Shear, S-H-E, S-H-S-H-E-A-R. <laughs> Southwest U.S., that's where we want to go, enter. Then from Shear, we're going to kind of draw straight through. We're going to go to Burley. That's going to be the airport. Again, that's a good bailout area if we needed to. Kilo, Bravo. Yankee, India, Burley Municipal uh, Municipal Airport. Yep, and we want to click Enter. That does have fuel as well. So if we got stuck, that's going to be our bailout point, okay? And, of course, we can always go to the east if we needed a bailout as well. From that point, we're going to go to Mountain Home Airport, which is going to be M Kilo M-U-O. And I'm, again, through this whole thing, I'm going to show you some dead reckoning. M U Oscar Mountain Home Air Force Base. We're not going to land there, but <laughs> we're just going to use it as a waypoint. It's uh, a class Charlie airspace and looks like ground to 5500. We're going to be way over the top of that. And then, obviously, one of our last waypoints until we hit Boise is A T E T Y. A T E. E T Y Northwest U S. That is mm, that could that is correct. As we pass from the southwest to the northwest, it pushes us to the northwest. And I'll show you what we're talking about. This guy, chart supplements, right here. These are great, great tools to have uh, when you're flying VFR aircraft or you're flying VFR. Um, this just came in the mail today. I've got the chart supplement for the southwest as well as the north e, uh, northwest so um, I don't fly a lot of EFR as you know but sometimes I do like to take a break and the reason why I'm taking a break today is because we're off I mean I have to have three days off on flying the line for part 117 rules and then that's that's kind of why I'm doing it so that's why we're here and then the last thing is Boise okay so we're all set with our route. So the route is plugged in, ready to go. All right, I'm going to come right back here. And then you can take a look at traffic. You can throw terrain. You can kind of see where, where what this is looking like. But I'm going to use the charts. Now, now there is no airport chart for this airport.
okay? So I'm not going to worry about too much on this one because there's no departures, no, there's nothing. This airport doesn't even have a chart, right? But if we go to utilities, we can go to our map. We are definitely going to use this. And you can see it now drawn on our VFR chart, the exact where we're going to go. So this is kind of the route. We're going to go dead reckoning through this whole thing. We're going to fly GPS, though, uh, just up a few, a few ways, and we'll be good to go. All right. So that's on, and that is looking good. Any comments? When in doubt, follow the magenta. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Kaiser said, would we get shot down? No. No. It, w it wouldn't be good. We would get intercepted. They could intercept us. They could say, what are you doing? You know, you're in a military operation area. Um, are you lost? You know, they probably know. Uh, especially, we filed a flight plan. We filed a VFR flight plan, so, you know. Chances of that happening, zero to none. All right, it's looking pretty good to the south. Did our airplane move? <laughs> it looks like it got pushed. And it's windy still. Oh, man. Where's our battery? I thought our battery was still on. Okay. Yikes, Ola. So um, what I'm going to do is actually turn on that battery system here external power on i don't know why it took it off but i i want to be plugged in because i don't want to be draining our battery ourselves you know what i mean so let's get the weather folks this is kind of the deal when you're flying sometimes where you're like uh this is kind of looking crappy it is i agree with you so what we'll do is we'll go search. Now, I could either keep the weather the way it is, and it's going to be marginal for us, or I could change the weather. That's completely up to you. Um, right now, Salt Lake is reporting. Uh, let's go search Salt Lake City. Reporting right now. I can get there. It'd be awesome. Click open airport. We're going to click weather. Right now, 130 at 10. So we're flying south. If we'd have flying straight into the heart of this thunderstorm, we are going to have to wait. Like, I would scrap this flight, folks. I mean, honestly, we're just going to have to change the weather. I would say fair, just to show you, because there's no way I'm going to fly in this. Like, just to let you know, I'm not flying in this. There's no way. With this aircraft, I wouldn't do it. Maybe if I punched out of here, we could do it. But right now, 130.10, gusting 22, 10 miles an hour. I mean, 10 miles visibility, light showers and rain, thunderstorms, view clouds 55, broken it. I would be like, you know, we're not going in this crap. Um, even if it was, even if we were on a commercial flight, I would say, yeah, I'm going to wait for the storm to pass over us. Uh, get this thunderstorm out of the way looks like we're about to get smacked so I might have changed the weather I just don't like I don't like the wind the wind blowing hard um, I want to bail in the north I would bail in the north the problem is we got to take off south so you tell me we could change the weather pretty quick we can go up here and change it to uh, just kind of clear you know clear skies we could do like fair weather you tell me what you want to do i'll tell you what i would have done in yeah see the prop spinning that's that's not a good sign <laughs> that's that's not good <laughs> so i think we might have to adjust the weather folks uh we could go live again on our landing but i think to get out of here you know to see this flight you're gonna there's no way i'd fly in this so um i would be tempted to fly right now going northbound if the wind was favoring north I'd say yeah let's get, let's get out of here and we'll beat it um, but you could see it's kind of the rain is a telltale sign of uh, junk I mean you should never do what I'm about to do but um, don't ever do what I'm going to what I'm going to do right now so not on the ground at least so I'm going to throw it on standby we'll throw our uh, radar on and I'll show you kind of what we're painting to the south and that's on test. Good. And let's throw it on on. And let's see what we got. Again, it's not very accurate. This is miles. So this is 10 miles. I'm going to go ahead and throw those rings here. 
Right now, it doesn't look too bad. It's just green. Green we can do. I can do green. And again, that's Salt Lake City, so you got to understand Bountiful sitting... We're probably a few miles to the north of that. Yeah. Uh, don't you want to stay at least 20 miles away from thunderstorms? Yeah, of course. If you can. I knew that I found this and subscribe. Thank you. Hey, Mike. Cool that I found this and subscribed. Yeah, you want to stay away from thunderstorms, folks. I mean, thunderstorms are not good. Airplanes and thunderstorms do not mix, and I don't care what, how big your aircraft is. All right, it's just, it's not a good thing. So, if we were in real life right now, there's no way I'd fly. I'm just, I'm being honest. There's no way I'd fly this. I'd say, yeah, we're scrapping this flight, or we're going to delay it until the thunderstorm passes us. Either way, it's no good. So, what I'm going to do to show you this, because I'm going to turn off live weather. Okay, and what I'll do is just go, I won't go clear skies, let's do a few clouds there, and then we could kick it back on um, when we, you know, when we when we take off. How's that? When we kind of clear the thunderstorms, I'll turn it back on, just because, there, you know, we'd have to wait another three hours or so to, for this crap to move on. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's just do that in this way. Yeah, we're going to, what Sean says, wait. We're going to wait the thunderstorm out. That's exactly what we did. Okay, now it's beautiful. Oh, my gosh, look. Weather's great. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, and start this thing up. We're going to run through a checklist. Now, everything's a flow. Before starting engine, we're going to do pre-flight checks complete. Flight planning is complete. Aft doors are closed. Forward cabin doors closed. And our seats are adjusted and locked. They are. Um... I'll give you some right here. There we go. And then we're going to go seats, just the lock. We got that seatbelt and shoulder harnesses. I need to put my seatbelt on, don't I? We're going to turn this dome light off. We don't need it now. And we'll turn your dome light off. We don't need it right now. Okay. Sean made the call. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it, man. Uh, seats. Do I have to turn my seatbelts on? I will. I'll, I'll throw my seatbelts on for you. Even though, oh, this thing's so heavy. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's heavy. And you know what I'm going to do? Before I do that, I'm actually going to go up. There we go. Did we do a walk around? You want to see the walk around? I'll give you a walk around. Let's do that. Um, I wish that this actually had a walk around feature. It it doesn't, so you just got to kind of simulate it when you do it. So before I get my shoulder straps in, let's go ahead and do a, that walk around inspection for you, and I'll show you. Uh, let's go out. All right, so walking around the aircraft, I would come out the door. The door's right here. Uh, boy, what a beautiful day over here in, in Bountiful. Uh, we'd come off the wing right now, and actually you would set your flaps down. Uh, but I'm not doing that yet, so let's see. Yep, okay, so you set your flaps down, and then you shut off your battery. But again, I'm running the, the ground power, so we're fine. We're not going to burn battery out. But you would do that. Uh, come down here. We're going to start on the empennage of the aircraft. Okay, that's back here. Uh, we'll kind of take a look at your static port, which is right there. You can see that silver thing. That's your static port. You come up, you look at the vertical stab, that looks great. Antenna's on the aircraft. Uh, Piper is notorious for this. It's a stable later, not a stabilizer. Stable later. So I can move the entire yoke. This whole thing is going to move. And this is a uh, anti-servo tab. It's a trim tab on the back. And then rudder, you would just obviously pull that rudder, and the rudder ain't working. So I'm going to have to find out why. Uh, okay, that looks good on this side. Again, static wicks. The lights are on. That looks great. ELT is on the aircraft. You can see that there. It's, it's beautiful modeled. I mean, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, then your aerolons. Aerolons look great. Come over here. Check your aerolons. Static port looks good. Your lighting. Uh, we do have de-icing boots on this aircraft, so it's heated. 
it's very rudimentary. It's not uh, great. You take a look at the propellers. We do have propeller heat as well. We won't need that today, obviously. I want to take a look inside the the engine here, just in case if you see any birds or anything like that sitting in there. We did have plugs in it, but it was still anything can get in there. So you want to make sure that's good. This is a this is an like I said, it's 340 horsepower per side, so this thing burns quick. Uh, it's an awesome looking airplane. Big old nose, keep a lot of uh, baggage in the front. So we could take a look down at the Oleo strut. You want to make sure that's good and um, extended, but not too much. It's perfect. And then same thing here. You're looking at the props. You're looking for any nicks, bents, bent, anything bent on it, uh, that kind of stuff. Make sure that the leading edge of the prop is is smooth and good to go. And same thing on this on the leading edge of the wing. You want to make sure the wing is good. And it is. You got fuel on the aircraft. You would check the fuel. Obviously, you want to make sure you're not uh, contaminated by water or anything like that. And then we're going to jump back inside the airplane. And there we go. All right. So walk around inspection is done. Uh, Mike says, yeah, one Coronado's better planes after they added a mod. Yeah, this is I love this airplane. You're gonna you're gonna watch this. It's really nice. Okay, alternators are coming on. Seatbelts and harnesses are set. Oops. Let's go ahead and throw the alts on. Alternators are on. Left and the right. Alternators on. Great. Park brake is set. Gear is down. It is. We have. Uh, I don't want to shut the battery off because we'll lose our GPS. That's not what I want to do right now. So we're going to come over here. We're going to go throttles are to idle. They are. Prop control, full forward. That's the blue handles. We're going to put them full forward. And the prop pitch, if you've never flown a complex aircraft, inside the hub of the spinner of the propeller, and I'll show you as we take off, it kind of think of it as it moves, and oil moves it, okay? So it moves the whole pitch of the prop. So you could grab a lot more air if it's a high pitch, which means it's a high angle of attack, all of this, all that this prop is, folks, is just an airfoil. It's just a wing. So we could change that angle of attack of the airfoil or the prop to bite the air more. And that's what pitch of the propeller means. High pitch, high bite. Okay, I want you to think that. Remember that. Okay? Good stuff. And when we feather it, which we're going to do today, it, it taking that pitch and shoving all that oil into the hub and rotating that prop dead into the wind so it just cuts it like a wing right because if you had full-on pitch like this and it's rotating all of that drag is going to just stop right let's say we lost an engine and think about that if all that drag would would hit my hand or the propeller like this flat and would cause a lot of drag and a lot a lot of problems so we need to get this propeller from here to there okay and that is called feathering the engine we want to feather it so we have less drag and the wind airflow goes right over the top. I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. We've got mixture full forward friction handle is good. Uh, alternate controls are off. Cow flaps coming down here. Now our cow flaps are on the engines and you can see I just popped them open. They look right here. And basically all that does is let the exhaust come out and better cooling on the engines. Okay, These are reciprocating aircraft. This is a reciprocating engine. So flaps are coming up um so anytime you get a reciprocating engine like this you have problems with heating and overheating and everything just shut off on me wanted to shut off i probably burn burn to burn the uh battery down hopefully we don't have to do it again stabilizer rudder trim is set fuel selector is coming on this aircraft is on the bottom looks like we've lost power and i might have to redo the battery <laughs> It's no big deal. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm just going to take this. I'll smudge such a small airplane. All right, right here, flip those to the on position. Um, let's see if we can't get any uh, help here with our yeah, external power. Dude, I kept you on. I don't understand why you're doing this to me. <sighs> Idiots. And you saw I didn't move it. Remove it. Okay, cow flaps good, fuel selectors on, heat switches are off, radio master switch. Uh, we're, well, we're going to throw it off now because there's no point in having it on. Uh, if we have to do what we have to do, it's not, not that big of a deal. 
Okay, engine start, we're going to actually start with power. Okay, so there's a couple of, of things we're going to do. Start engine, uh, start hard engine, start with external power operations using external power source. The battery switch should be off, but it's possible to use the ship's battery in parallel. By turning the battery mass switch on, this will give longer, this will give longer cranking capabilities, will not increase the amperage. Care should be exercised because if the ship's battery has been depleted, the external power supply can be reduced to the level of the ship's battery. This can be tested by turning the battery mass switch on momentarily while the starter is engaged. All right, well, let's try it. Battery master switch, let's throw it, throw it off. Okay, we're going to try doing an external power here. Alternate switches are off. They are. Electrical power is off. Receptacle door is open. Insert the power plug. Done. Throttles, low as possible RPM. They are. Insert power plug. We did. Secure battery master switch on. What are you talking about? Alternators on. Okay, so let's try that again. All right, here we go. We're going to do a normal start with it. Just no big deal. And we're going to do a cold engine start. It's not cold weather, it's just a cold engine. It hasn't been started yet. All right, throttles. We're going to start the left one first. So we're going to push the throttle up just a little bit. Do about an inch. Crack it open. Propellers full forward. That's the blue handles. Battery mass switch is on. Gear lights, three green. I don't have no green on. That's because of the power. All right. Standby fuel pump. We're going to go ahead and throw the fuel pump on right here, which is coming right there. That fuel pump is on. Okay. Magneto switch on both sides. So we're going to go left clear side prop. there. Oh, we got to clear. And then we would look, say clear prop. You would scream it out the window. You'd probably just do this and yell clear prop. Okay. You guys with me? Did anybody sleeping? <laughs> We're just about there. Mixture's rich. So we're going to push the red handle, which is our fuel. We're going to go rich all the way. All right. And then we're going to go idle. Okay. Propel area clear starter. We're going to go ahead and engage and hope this thing lights. And as I push the starter, I'm going to push the, the mixture up. Here we go. And she's not even cranking. She's dead as a doornail. Dang you. What's the, what's the external power for? Really, dude? Oh, you stink. All right, we're going to do is shut it down. And I'm just going to refire the aircraft. Yeah. That's a bummer. All right, no big deal. We didn't lose anything. So what I'm going to do is just escape. We're going to go to restart. Yes. And basically, it's going to put us in the aircraft with a, with a charged battery. Now, normally, that wouldn't happen with external power on the aircraft. Now we're going to have to change the time and all that good stuff. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right. Time check coming in. And then I'll just have to change the weights. But that's not too bad. So stand by here. Live weather. We don't want that. January. It's not January. What the heck's going on here? This thing's crazy. August what? What are we? August 19th right now? Uh, 8.30 in the morning. We'll plan that. Live weather is off. If we flip it on, you can see where we're at. Hey, it's looking better. Actually, it's looking worse down there. Can't, can't need to spin the prop. <laughs> All right. What we'll do is we're going to do a normal uh, engine start right now. The only thing I have to do is change the fuel. So we got, we got to change this again. So we're going to go to uh, 40 and 40. What, what did we say? We had 90 on there? Dang it, I forgot. Let's see what we put on. We had 98, so we're going to fill it all the way up. 64 gallons. No, we don't want that. That's way too much. Um, what did I say we were putting on? 98? I think I said. I can't remember. Hang on, folks. We'll get you there. So we're going to go 49. Let's try that. This is a bummer because you got to click it like 10 times to get it to do anything. There we go. I could just, I bet you I could just use the dang slider and be all right. All right, 49, 49. We're doing uh, 201 in the front. 
Double click. All right. 201, we're doing... What did I say? I got to look. 100. Oh, you stink. 100. Max packs. No, we're doing the aft packs. We're doing 87. This is a pain in the neck. All right, so 87. Then we're going to go 90. And then our forward bags are 40. Oops. All right, that should put us right where we need to be at 4,400. It is close. 98, 201, 100. Okay. 87, 98. Oh, that's why. Okay. Ah, you stink. Oh, 20 pounds. 220. There we go. All right. We're good right there. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. All right. Let's start the engines and we'll we'll redo this whole thing. And like I said, if I need to, we'll just shut the weather off. But uh, I'm kind of looking at the weather again here. Let's see what we got on the weather radar. <laughs> uh, it's starting to dissipate, which is good. But still. All right. So we're there. Let's go through the process again. We'll start the engine and get the heck out of Dodge. And we'll go. I promise. All right, so what we're going to do is come up on the overhead here. We're going to go left. First thing we're going to do is actually and I need to check this really quick. So I want to make sure all that's good and we've got to install the GTN 750. So we're going to have to redo everything with the dang engine running, which is fine. Okay. All right, no big deal. Throttles one inch forward, full forward, battery master switch coming on. Here we go. We're not going to run it down this time. Gear lights three green. Yes. Man, standby fuel pump is coming on right there. Wow, I feel it in my seat now. Woo. Magneto switch on. Clear Left prop. Side. Mixer's rich. And we're going to cut off. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,003 on the cutoff. Prop area is clear. Let's go ahead and fire it. Fire and halt. Push it up. Come on, airplane. Come on, airplane. Light up for me. There we go. Nope. I'll try that again. Come down on the uh, mixture. Throttle up. Come on, catch. Oh, man. That's why. Well, the alternate, I shouldn't have anything to do with it. I might have to restart it. Shoot! Maybe open, that won't do anything. One, two, three, that's on. Let's start the right. Let's see if we can get the right started. How's that? One, two. Right pump's on. Fuel, starvation, that'll do it. It's hard because I have to redo everything over again. And I forgot what I didn't do and what I did. All right, let's try this now. I bet we get a good light. Come on. Come on. There she goes. Eureka, we got power. All right, good. We're going to bring up the uh, throttle to about 1,000 RPM, which is about right there. Just under that. I don't want to go too far because you're warming up the engine oil, right? So you got to warm up the oil, get the oil going. 
Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and fire up this engine, which is the right side. We're going to go straight to mixture, rich, drop, throttle up. All right, you ready to go? Here we go. Fuel pumps on. That's good. Let's go ahead and right engine start. Mixture in. There she is. There's a light. Good light. Now we're lit. Both sides. Okay, I'm gonna, again, bring the throttles down just a little bit, about about 800 RPM will we'll, we'll net us good. I just want to make sure, want to make sure your oil temperature is in the green and your pressure is in the green, and it is. So that's good. We're going to keep the fuel pumps on just because of the uh, issue. You can see the wind pushed us all the way back when we had the weather on. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, this is ugly, you guys. This is ugly. I do want to fly with, with real world winds, though. Okay. Uh, we've got good light, and we just have the pitot heat on. Everything else is good. Let's go and throw on the master radio, and we're going to do that again. Just kind of program this. We're going to do it very fast, so stand by one as we kind of get the uh, the thing program just a quick again all right so I'm gonna go to flight plan I'm sorry I took you through that whole thing for nothing BTF well hopefully you learn something sky park enter destination Boise good enter add a waypoint VPLGN VPLGN Okay, enter another one. We're going to go VPMSH. Southwest USA, enter that. Then we're going to come up to Mont, Monit, M O I N T. And I'll change the weather. Um. S-W-I-T-Z. T-Z Switz. Enter that from the top of that. You can see how awesome it is. It's not that hard. S-H-E-A-R. Shear. Enter. From Shear, we're going to Burley, Idaho. Which is going to be Kilo B Y I. Burley, enter. Right from there, we're going to kick it over to the west. Oh, shoot. Boise's getting nailed, too. <laughs> we might have to change the weather. To uh, Kilo M U N, which is M U N. That is not right. M U O Kilo M U Oscar, not zero. Kilo M U O. Yes. Answer. Last thing we do is A T A Y. Addy A T E A T E T Y. India. That ain't going to work. So A-T-E-T-Y. See, that's what I'm saying. Garbage in, garbage out. You're going to make sure what you put in a GPS is what's actually on your chart. That is. Enter. And then the last thing is Boise. We've got that hooked up already. We're going to go back. We're ready to go. Utilities. Map. Good to go here. That's our autopilot. I'm fine. We're going to go ahead and turn on the uh, transponder code. 1200. Salt Lake Center is online, um, but we're going to go ahead and keep it at 1,200. We don't need to talk to them because we're not in class Bravo airspace. We're going to go to the standby right now, and we're going to go to test. I'm going to keep it on test, and then 
actually on standby. And when we get there, we'll throw it on. So comm radio right now, we're going to go ahead and 121.2. So click to comms, or 122.8. So if I double click, or if I have, shoot, I gotta go back. Click the comms, I can bring it down, 122.8, and then flip them. There's a couple ways you could do it, I'll show you. 122 decimal 8. You don't actually have to be in this mode to do it, but I wanted to show you. Oh my gosh, come on. I should have went the other way. Okay. Flip it. It's on standby. I want to make that active. Where is this thing? Push the squelch. I did. I might be getting nailed too. Are you a real pilot? And once you start flying the E2A Comanche, you stop flying it. It's that good. Yeah, you won't stop flying it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the I've seen it. The A2A Comanche um, was really was um, really really interesting when we uh, when we saw it in um, we saw it in. I believe in um, FS Expo. It was it was amazing. It was, it was beautiful. All right, what we're gonna do is taxi through. I'm gonna have to just check this really quick. It's going to default. Yes, I am a real pilot, by the way. But this is screwing with me. I forgot. The IDEN on, okay, we're at 1200, we're, which means we're squawking the audio panel. This should open up, I don't know why it's not right now. It's giving me a headache, so I keep, I'm doing something stupid. Volume, keep the comms up. Yeah. What I want, bro. Okay. See, it should look like this. One twenty two eight transfer. That's on calm too, isn't it? We've got power. We're good to go. I am going to turn this off. It looks good. You know, the, the weather looks all right. Um, we're just going to be... We're going to be playing it kind of... We'll, we'll turn on the weather radar and see what we can do here. Okay. Back to the checklist. Uh Everything's warmed up. We're good to go. We've got um, gyros down here. It's good. We've got everything fired up, ready to go. Warm-up's good. 
Master's on. Gyro's set. Altimeter's o'clock set. Radio Master is on. We'll check the autopilot now. Flight Director, and then we'll go ahead and throw it on. And then off. We got the beep. That's good. We just tested that. Radios. I don't know why Com is screwing around on this one, but it shouldn't be. So that's pretty dumb. It's very interesting. It's bugging me. Just a minute. I'm on CTAF here, but I don't like this. Like that audio audio panel should come up, and it should give me the option to just type it in. So it's killing me right now. See what we're on. We're on 124. Yeah, we're we're on this frequency, so I gotta get this changed up. Just wanna make sure it's not something stupid. That's on. Installed. Okay. Well this is gonna bug me. Hang on just a minute. We before we get rolling, I've gotta make sure that uh That's on COM2. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. Salt Lake Center is online. I just want to let you know. Um, testing the enunciator. Folks, what the heck am I missing? I know I'm missing something. I can't... I can't put my finger on it, though, right now. So, we're burning precious fuel. That's good, that's good, that's good. Menu coming up. NDBs, intersection, airspace. This is just map overlays. That doesn't help us. Audio panel. You gotta be kidding me. Type into the standby and switch it. Yeah, all right, so. That's what I did here. Right, so, I mean, I'm there, 122.8, and that would be on this one, so if I push it in, we're good to go. Yeah. Select it again, nothing. Like, that's stupid. There's something I'm missing. I'm on mic two. I should just ten, send, send me over to 122.8. Uh, that's mic two, mic one. I want an audio panel. Nope. See, I should just be able to click it and it should work just like that. That's how easy it is. Right? So if I click this, it opens the standby window, and then once you're typed it in, you just click it. It's done. That's what's screwing around. <laughs> like, I don't understand what the heck is going on with this thing. Um, I've got to get this panel to work, though. Otherwise, we are dead in the water. Let me 
see like that's not what I'm talking about right there. I right, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. We've got one more thing we can do. Let's go old school on this. This is an old school one, but I want to see if I could throw... Yeah, see, that's nice. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try it. As we're burning fuel. Come on. <sighs> That's a bummer. Yeah, good. 122.8. Let's do the flight plan. Okay, good. Flight plan's in. Woo! All right, we got 122.8 now. Woohoo! And the weather's clear. Gosh, everything's in favor. Okay, you ready? We're going. We are moving. Let's go. The winds 130 is coming in from the south, so we're going to take off to the south, flip around, and we're going to go up to the north, okay? Everybody with me? All right, good deal. I think it just needed a reset or something. It was just being stupid. Because it's not that hard to change the frequency. So maybe there's got to be something wrong here. <laughs> These should be all the way open. All right, here we go. Brakes off. Let's go ahead and call them. Bountiful traffic, November 58668, taxi to the southern runway. I don't even know what runways there are. Taxi runway 17. Okay, hold on just a minute here. I've got to adjust something. The, f the um, rudder isn't working, so... You can see the default rudder controls are not cutting the mustard, so we'll just do that one. I know that one works. All right, we're going to have to taxi. I think we could taxi down here. We'll taxi straight, and then we'll go ahead and turn and take a look at the winds. 130, so pretty much straight behind. Just going to push the uh, yoke down, and we're not going to taxi that fast, so... I'm just going to keep it like that. Again, we got to keep it under 6,000 feet, especially with these thunderstorms. Uh, we got to kind of stay away from the uh, Class Bravo airspace best we can. Now it sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the weather radar here in just a minute. we got to do a run-up. We'll, we'll get a run-up done, the whole nine yards. I'll show you all that. What about our lights? What's going on up there? All right, that's... i go taxi lights on. Fuel pumps are on. throw our navs on next. Nav lights coming on. There we go. Isn't this nice? Right here. One, three. One, runway one, seven, is it? Or one, three? It's one, seven. Okay, what we're going to do is slow the aircraft down. I'll push that uh, left engine up. Kind of give us a nice little turn here into the wind best we can that's good enough okay brakes coming on and we're gonna do a run-up this is just testing everything making sure the aircraft's good to go park your brake is set mixtures full rich propellers are full forward throttles we're gonna bring them up to a thousand rpm so let's just go ahead right there stop it that's not too much we're just gonna check the engine instruments now just make sure everything's in the green so we got RPM there, TTT, TIT, which is uh, our basically engine gas temperature. Cylinder head temperature is there, fuel flow is there, that looks good, everything is in the green. VAC is looking good, we've got 
uh, good on the fuel. Throttle's coming up to 1,500 RPMs, so you're going to bump them up. Okay, about right there, 1,500 RPM. We're going to go ahead and cycle the throttle. Oh, what happened there? That's weird. It's causing a problem. Stand by one on that. That shouldn't happen either. Gonna open spad.next because it's attached to it. So we'll find out what it's doing that for. See? Yeah, that's not right. It shouldn't do that. Come on, you stupid thing. just look at this really quick that should not be attached okay so that's throttle one throttle two this one right here it's correct but I don't know why it's oh I think I... let me just do one quick thing this is all ready to go I have this blank as it should be That's stupid. All right, here we go. We're going to bring him up to 1,500. I'll just do it with my hand. For now, that's kind of how we're going to get rid of this. Okay, you're going to drop it and make sure that... Uh, same thing here. We're going to, we're going to pull back. That's going to really bug me. Okay, we'll bring it up. See, number two is fine. This is number one. I don't know. Giving me fits. That's why. Pellet pitch. Yes. Yes. That's low pitch. That's why I was in reverse. Should work. Nope. Invert the axis. Alright, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this stupid thing. We're good though. My sim's only good for a 737. You're exactly right. Well, I had it all ready to go <laughs> until this. All right, I'm going to come over here and cycle it myself. Pop them in the feather. Add a feather. I could do number two. Feather. Again, you're shoving that oil in there. Pop them out of feather. All right, that's good. I'm going to bring it up to 2300 RPM. I'm going to do a mag check. About good right there. All right. Let's do a mag check. Left side. Should get a drop. Good. No more than 150. Back up. Again. It's perfect. Right side. Drop. Good. Good. All right, I'm going to come back down. Uh, cycle the alternate air. Good. And our vacuum's here. We're going to bring it all the way down to idle and just watch the vac gauge. Just want to make sure the engines don't quit on you right now. And the vac is still good. So we're good to go. All right.
Doors are closed, seatbelts good to go, armrests are set, batteries on, alternators on, fuel pumps are on. Everything's on on top. Okay, we got alternate uh, prop controls full forward, mixtures full forward, alternate air is off, flaps are set, we don't need any. Air conditioning is on, stabilized rudder trim set, let's just kind of make sure we're good to go, I'll cycle that, we got it. Fuel selectors on, flight controls release, park brake is coming off. So once we, um, the weather looks nasty to the north now, so we'll, we'll kind of kind of take a peek we'll do a nice turn keep it tight and I am actually gonna turn I want to avoid the airspace which is to the ground so like we're gonna have to make a, a right turn hang on just a minute tap the brakes I mean likes coming on strobe lights are on battleful traffic November 58688 eight, taken off to the south. Bountiful. Alright, we're going to make a hard turn. Uh, I want to keep it away from. Again, if you look here, I'll show you what my dilemma is. We go to utilities, and I'll show you the map here, and I'll just zoom into it. If we make a turn toward the Salt Lake Airport, we're going to be right on them. So we are actually going to have to go left, and it's going to be a sharp left turn because we have terrain. So we got to watch the terrain, make a left turn, and get out. Let's turn our uh, I was going to take our turn on our radar and see what we've got on the radar. Looks pretty good. I think that stuff is kind of it's clear to the north. I mean, it's just kind of nasty but we're ready to go all right uh, we're gonna rotate about uh, looks like about 70 knots right around there and then we're gonna climb out like at 90 yeah we'll rotate about 80, about 80 knots so 80 knots will take it and then we're just gonna go ahead and gear up and that's it. We'll climb speed about 88. How's that? We'll stay away from the Class Bravo airspace. I uh, just want to kind of look behind me. Yeah, it's going to be ugly. Staying away from this stuff. It's going to be... It's going to be gnarly, folks, without uh, a clearance. Ah... Uh. I don't know, do we get an IFR or just go? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, I'd have to get an IFR clearance. We'll go live weather here once we're cleared. I just don't want to deal with it right now. How's that? I would, I would definitely have an IFR clearance and I wouldn't even be flying through that. So it, it's, it's gonna be hard for me to, to do that. Now it's better. All right, let's do this thing. Okay, you ready? Coming up, everything's good to go. We're gonna push it up to about the RPM to about 2600. I've got the airplane right here. Right about there, about 30 inches. Perfect, right there. All right, there's 70 knots. Here comes 80 knots, so rotate. Pause ready to climb gear coming up. Now we're, I told you we're right on that line, so we're gonna go ahead and roll out. Oop. And what I'm gonna do is just keep turning. It keeps us away from their airspace. And we've got terrain to contend with, so about 600 feet right now. We're gonna be a nice turn here. 80 knots, so let's start relaxing some back pressure. Right, I don't want to do that. I don't want to stall you. I know I'm asking you. <laughs> there we go. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and climb. We're good now, we're clear of the clouds, we're clear of the, the weather. Once we clear the weather, I'll turn it back on, but right now, we're good. Here we go. All right, there's 5,000. We're gonna climb up to 6,000 and we'll hold. We're doing good on the climb, it's about 100 knots. Once we get to a decent altitude, I'll go ahead and um, just want to make sure we're cleared of this. We'll shut the uh, fuel pumps off. There's 6,000 feet. That's going to be good for us. See, that's going to screw me with me. I have to fix that. That's a gear horn, if you're wondering what the heck that was. Uh, there's 6,000. Okay, there's Centerville. We're flying at this I-15 straight across. Like I said, we got to stay below this uh, airspace here. We're okay on this side. It's 7,000 on the start, so. Uh, I'm going to push it just up a little bit. Man, I got to stop that. That's ridiculous. It's like something's interfering. I think it's in the simulator. I'm going to have to check it out here once we're done. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fuel pumps on both sides. And the uh, nav light will keep on. Taxi light will turn off. Landing light, we're going to be off. So that's full. Off. Pulse. Let's go off. I'm just going to try to trim it, and then we'll turn it back on the weather here shortly. How's that? All right. So a little bit of dead reckoning right now. We're going to go try to look for a lagoon over the nose and this is a VFR corridor we're going to be hitting very soon you can see lagoon amusement park coming up don't know now this is I-15 corridor so this is the major road that goes north and south the airport here um, let's see if I can see it kind of out of the nose it's very stable this airplane is trimmed out real nice we're doing about 100 knots I mean I can't accelerate which I probably will just push that it sucks because the the pitch and the power are stupid right now All right, Lagoon is right here. It's like right off the wing. And uh, what we'll do is just kind of pass this. And then we could go click on the GPS. The thing is, if we do so, I just want to make sure we're through this corridor. Why am I not kicking that side? What's going on here? Turn a heading of basically 280 on the heading. I don't want to do too much because, again, I want to stay away from this 7,500 below, so it's 6,000. ATC is looking at me. They know exactly what I'm doing. I got, he's VFR traffic. He's 6,000. He's going to go over the corridor, staying out of his airspace. Well, that's the thing, you don't have to uh, talk to ATC with this. Now, I'm going to turn the autopilot on. I mean, this is, we're doing pretty good right now. 
We still have to stay about 78. I could climb to about 7,000, which I will here in a minute once we're through this next little jaunt. I'll go ahead and do that. We can start a climb. You can see we're cruising real slow. It's just we're trying to conserve some fuel. We'll go ahead and get it back on here in just a minute. There's 6,000 now. Real nice. They're pretty, isn't it? Beautiful looking uh, airplane. Okay, you can see the next one, the next airspace segment starts at 7,800. So we could climb a little bit to 7,000. Now what you see off the wing here, this is called Antelope Island. And folks, I won't, I won't kick it back on the weather here in just a minute. Um, just until we're th we're through the thunderstorms, and I'll turn it back on. But right now, we're not painting anything, obviously, so we're looking good. I'll go ahead and turn off the cameras. That might be a little bit better for you, so you can see a little bit more. All right, autopilot's coming on. So what I'm going to do is click nav. All right, and make sure the autopilot is on. So now we've got an autopilot on. I kicked it to nav and altitude hold. So it's going to trim out, keep us at 6,000 until we're clear of the class Bravo, and then we could climb. All right, so, so far, so good. We're doing about 20 inches and about RPMs a little high. And I think what I'm going to try to do is see if... The simulator has some issues with the controls. So I want to make sure that there's it's not conflicting with anything. So if I go to you know pitch I want to make sure there's no access that's screwing it up. I don't think so. Okay. Well, I don't know what's going on. There's definitely something going on with both of these and we're, we're gonna have to figure it out before this thing's over okay we're through 6,000 feet right now once we get through the next segment you could see here arrival at the waypoint so that's good we're gonna go ahead and I'll zoom in on you and you could see from this waypoint we're going to transition this next one. You can see we're 7,800 and below to 12,000. So we could climb to 7,000. So how do you climb it? It's pretty nice. You could do a pitch angle. So I could do a vertical speed, which I will do. I'll engage vertical speed. And I'm just going to do like a two, 300 feet climb. And I'm going to have to do this at the same time. This is conflicting. So I'm pushing the pitch up at the same time. Pulling the engines up, pushing the pitch. Ah, oh, this is going to annoy me. I should have figured this out on the ground. You can see how that, how the airplane, the adverse yaw, is taking over. And now we're going to come up. We're going to bring those manifold pressure up, which is the throttles, as we're in a nice climb. So we're going to get some airspeed and altitude. And we're going to hold at 7,000. It's going to be a little bit less, so I'm going to turn on the uh, weather. I think we're just out of the thunderstorm here. Just what real world conditions. So this is Antelope Island, what you see. And I'm going to stop it at 65 because I don't know what the uh, what the pressure really is out there. Let me look. Really quick. Pressure is 3002. Oh, we're right there, so that's good. Okay, you see we're getting into a cloud, so I know we got VFR on top. Again, I would probably have to request a high for a flight plan uh, if I'm going into clouds, which, again, it's illegal if you're on a VFR flight plan. 
uh, we would request IFR on top, which I'm probably going to have to do anyway. So once we punch through this, I can still see, but it's not, it's really not legal. Now there's 7,000, so I'm just going to stop the climb. Altitude hold. And then I'm going to have to pull power. Boy, I don't know what's going on with this thing. I'm gonna have to request a via an IFR flight plan, I think, guys. I don't I don't think we're gonna be able to to get through this crap without it. See once we're out of their airspace, we got one more ring to go and that's seventy eight hundred. I might have to call them one two zero decimal two. Let's turn on real weather. All right, let's get your comments here. Just go. Uh, it's done. <laughs> Company owns 750 aircraft. That's exactly, Chris. Hello, what's going on, man? Uh, we're definitely going to have to climb up, get some airspace here. Let's call up center 120.25. I'll turn it on. But again, I just kind of try to get our out of their dang airspace. So just right, right when we're we're done with them, we could start climbing up. And I need altitude, so let's try one two zero two seven five. There we go again. Com one, that was better. It worked this time. All right, so com one one two zero. There we go. Two seven five. Answer. Let me call him up. Right, let me go live weather. You guys ready for live weather? I don't know if it's gonna work, but we might get thrashed. Stand by. <laughs> there we go. Whoa, airplane, settle down. Speeds and winding like that, that's gonna come up. It's just because of the weather change, that's all. We call them up. Level altitude. Let's see where we're at here. We gotta climb higher. We're kinda through it. Remember I said the thunderstorms are definitely behind us and they are. There it is. So I told you what I wanted to do in the first place. Just pop it out. Man. I gotta climb. <laughs> Call for flight following. Salt Lake Center, November uh, five eight six eight eight. Vertical speed up, and then we're going to start the climb here. Let's go vertical speed. Where are you? There you go. Climb about 1,000 feet a minute, make sure we're good on power, and we're going to start climbing up. About 35 inches of manifold pressure. Let's try them again here. I don't know if the uh, ATC heard me or what's going on. Check, check, check. Yeah. One two zero two seven five. 
Salt Lake Center, November 58688. Well, <laughs> we're about out of his, um, well, Salt Lake, we're still in his airspace. Here we go. Okay, he's calling me on frequency with no response, so I might have to disconnect and reconnect. I don't know what's going on. Let me make sure... Salt Lake China Center radio check. I probably just stepped on four or five different. Nope. He can't hear me and I can't hear him, so I'm just going to dump it. Okay, you see how close we are to uh, a stall? So what we're going to do is we're going to decrease that vertical speed. And start pulling power mixture, that is. See so here that RPM coming up. I'll have to decrease that manifold pressure. There we go, just a little bit. We're going to lean the engines back. There we are. All right, so I want about 38 inches on the manifold pressure, which is this gauge here. And then RPM is a little on the... I pull back the RPM. Dude, this thing is stupid. <laughs> What's going on? Now I can increase my vertical speed again. That's just because I didn't lean it. As you climb on a reciprocating aircraft, you got to lean out the engines. Or else you get too much fuel in, in the mixture. Okay. So what we'll do now is we're flying over... We got real world weather on, so that's good. We're flying over this uh, Willard Bay. This is called Willard Bay, and you can see it's beautiful now. It's really nice. We're kind of outrunning that thunderstorm behind us. And I wonder, I wonder if that right here, if you could see all this. This is an interesting thing here. I think this is a uh, salt mining facility I'm just guessing all right let's see dead reckoning we're gonna go follow the lake and I know we're right over the top of here so we're gonna follow the lake and when we hit the lake shore we're gonna go north about uh, 338 and we'll see if we could tune a VOR or something in there I, I shut off the uh, air traffic control just because I don't know what's going on with my radios hi right, folks what do you think about the airplane so far there's 10,000 feet okay, I'm gonna start leaning it out just a little bit again see if I can get any more RPMs out of it watching my exhaust temperature as well kind of goosing it down just to see once you see an RPM drop like that then you can push it back up a little bit there we go and now we're you know you you could see how fast we're, we're doing about 120 yeah, 
I'm going to increase the vertical speed to 1,000 feet a minute. Pretty stable so far. We're going to climb to 13,000, 13.5. Okay, ETA. We'll try to have to sort out the um, propeller issue. I've got to try to sort that out. Being stupid. I don't know what's going on. Uh, let's see. Do we have a VOR anywhere? Burley VOR, 114.1. So I am going to tune the VOR in. I'm just going to click on this, 114.10, decimal one zero, which is Burley. We're going to click Enter, and I'll flip that to Active. Can see B Y I, we've got it. Okay, I'm going to try leaning again just to see if we can get any more power on the out of the engines. Remember, this is turbocharged. Um, you'd be on supplemental for sure. If you hit 14,000, we'll be there, but. You're, they, they say anything above 10,000, you really want to have oxygen with you. I think the reg is 14, 14,000 straight up. All right, so you're at 12,300 coming. And then we've got the lake, and then we'll start looking, doing some dead reckoning here. So you can see we're going to head straight to this lake shore basically when we hit the lake shore we're going to turn to a north heading of uh, basically 338 and that's kind of what we'll do oh man there's 13,000 coming up Let's see what our ground speed we're doing we've got a ground speed of 144 there's 13,000 we'll hold about 13.4 how's that everybody good with that and the only reason why I'm doing that is because VFR you, you want to hold on the you know fives so 13.5 14.5 whatever However, everybody flies at that one altitude. Okay. Now the fun part. We're going to go drop our manifold pressure. And we're going to get our manifold pressure. It seems the freaking engine is doing the same thing. It's so stupid. Once we get our RPM back up. And I'm going to look at, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm looking at um, our charts. And I'm going to pull up the chart and I'll show you our performance tables and where we want to be. We want to be at normal cruise. It's econ. Uh, I think I lost it. Anyway, it's below 20,000 feet. We want to be normal cruise, economy cruise. So. We'll check it at uh, 23, 27 inches. So 2300 RPM first. So we're going to get our RPM down by pulling. See our props. This stupid thing is screwing me up. All right, I'm just going to have to deal with this. All right. And then we're going to get our manifold pressure at 29 inches. So I'm pulling back the manifold pressure. There we go. 29 inches, 23 inches. We're good. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So this right here, MAP, that's your manifold pressure. Okay, so right now we're sitting at 25. We're looking at 29. What did we say, 29 or 20? Yeah, 29, 
27. So I want to actually get the manifold pressure lower. So we're going to go 27. 5, 26, 27 right there. And then I'll deal with this stupid thing, which is going to be our freaking dumb piece of crap. <laughs> Alright, so let me set this first. This MAP is going to be set. There's about 27 inches, and we want RPM at what? 2400. So I'm going to just back. Come on, bro. It's really screwing me up. This thing super hard to, to get it squared away when you're your manifold pressure now is at 20, 27 inches, and we're looking at 20 RPM, 2,400, 22. Yeah, we're right in that range, 23. We're there. We're about 2,300 RPM, so we're doing good. This is where we want to be. And you could try to pull some uh, mixture to see... Yeah, I see the TIT coming up just a little bit. It's just going to give us a little more power. That means we're heating the cylinders up. Basically, you want to make sure you want to pull it down and you get a drop. See that slight drop in RPM? You don't want to go too far. Nope, that's dangerous. <laughs> I'm just going to stay and keep it right there. And then you can adjust your fuel flow, so you can see. Our fuel flow right there is about, is that 10? Ah, it's a gallon per hour, so it's 10 gallons per hour on the fuel, which is more than what we thought we were, less than what we were thought we were gonna burn. So let's take a look at via some VFR flying now. So remember I said to the coastline and we have obviously the, we're gonna just center this. We're going to Switz. Once we get up there, we're gonna go ahead and turn north. Now we gotta be careful because we're gonna be running into some terrain. So we're gonna have terrain issues and all sorts of stuff we gotta watch for. So we'll have to check on that. But if you're new to the channel, Subscribe to us. We don't normally fly three degrees Celsius. That's cool. We don't normally fly uh, general aviation aircraft. We actually fly, you know, the 737 is pretty much the specialty here on this channel. Um, but since I'm off, I have by part 117 rules. I thought it'd be fun to take the Seneca up and do a little bit of flying. And um, you know, I don't know if we go to Boise, we might duck off, go somewhere else. That's so cool about, that's the cool thing about GA aircraft. Do whatever you want. <laughs> um, fly wherever we want. And it's beautifully modeled. They did such a good job on it. Really, really nice. Alright, we're going to fly, you see these two valleys, this valley here and here, we're pretty much going to cut straight through it, there's a waypoint right over here called Shear, and then we'll cut through there, so you could see on our track, we're on a 339 track, which is about right, we had said 338, okay, which we want, we, ground speed's 179, that's good, and we're doing... Um, a couple things. I want to show you some stuff we could do here on this GPS, on the standby. Well, the GPS number two, I would say. Um, if we go back to click, forgot here, click menu, we could see what we want to change, what fields we want to change. So, this is user configure field. So, we want to keep the ground speed then you can pick really any one of these so a lot so what we're gonna do
Distance is important. Track is important. But I think what's more important for me is I want timing, right? So I want to know what time. See, this this pretty much the same. So I am going to change this to change fields. We'll change this track to an ETA. We could go distance to destination, 207 miles. That's very nice. Since we have this, I'm going to change this over to time. So estimated time arrival at waypoint is very important. Or you could do estimated time arrival at destination. Uh, very important. A 1547 Zulu. Um, user configured fields. I get it. So, but you can see uh, that's one way of changing stuff. Pretty cool thing in a GPS when you when you want to know what we're looking at. I have to do the math. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think we're seven hours. So we got about an hour if we wanted to go to Boise. So that's going to be up to you. Mike says, I like the GA aircraft. Yeah, it's, you know, once in a while it's fun, right? Like I said, I've got, we've got uh, a day off. You know, actually three days off from flying the jet, so might as well. And the only thing we can't, and the, the thing that stinks is I wanted to change the mode time. Right? And I can't change it, so that's kind of a bummer. We got Locomotive Springs coming off. You can see the, let's see if you can see an airport here. It's going to be off on the wing. So nice about flying the uh, GPS. There's going to be a little airport right here called Locomotive Springs. That's teeny. It's probably this thing right here. I can't even tell. UT-94 is what it's called. Little strip. Ah, it's actually a couple of runways. It's, it's paved. It looks paved. I don't know if it is. No, it's not paved. Let's see. What do we got? Do we know anything about this airport? It's private, so you can't land on it. How's that? So it's a, somebody's private air, airstrip. So if we were an emergency, we could we could put it down, but uh, because it's private, we're stuck. All right, folks. So we're headed toward these two mountain ranges. When we hit that mountain range. We're going to turn northbound to essentially low battery shoot. I gotta plug this thing in. Yeah. I gotta plug in my uh So what do you guys want to know on the aircraft? This mountain range up ahead is a nine thousand feet. So we'll get a radio we'll get an altimeter setting at uh, Burley. So let's check Burley's altimeter. I'm going to open the airport. Burley is reporting 29 or 9 or 5. So I am going to adjust that right now just so we can see 29 or 9 or 5. And that's another thing about GA. You're always adjusting stuff. You're never just sitting there. 2995, there we go. Um, so you're either adjusting your altitude, or we got the, the obviously the radar on. We're squawking 1200, which means we are on a VFR plan, and we are VFR, folks. I want to let you know uh, that we are completely legal right now. The other time it was it was a little probably not legal. You know, flying through that when we just took off out of Bountiful, but right now we're legal, so doing pretty good. One thing I will do is shut the cow flaps off. Again, what that's going to do is going to give us like one or two knots of extra speed. Um, Should have done that at cruise a while ago, but 
you always want to do that to make sure that you're you're not you're not throwing unnecessary drag out there. And I'm going to put this on nav one, so you can see one one four point one. It's it's tuned in burly. Now what I'll do is on nav two, I'll go ahead and try that. So if on nav two. Try this one more time. Uh, intercom, no. Guys, oh, there we go. Okay, one one four decimal. So what I'm going to try to do is throw this down. I'm going to get one more four decimal one. I'll throw it back up. That should, we should see it on our nav two display here. Cancel that. There's shear. This is a waypoint called shear. Again, it puts us right in between these two valleys. And I could split the valley right now and go straight through. And we're going to go direct to Burley. So Burley VOR is coming, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. We're going to turn to a heading of 306, so you could change this to 306 right now, right there. Um, the OBS, I don't know why number two is not working, 114.1. You can see we're heading up to Shear. We've got about 5.3 nautical miles to go to there. Uh, estimated time, 15.47. And we're looking at uh, 188 miles to go. So we can track waypoint. Another thing I like to do is track the waypoint in terms of, all right, let's do um, change of field. This is good. This I'm gonna change to estimated time arrival at the waypoint end. So we got about a minute to go before we get to Shear. And then we're going to turn right in between these two mountain ranges. And then our next like visual is going to be the river. It's going to be a river. So that's really a tough like VFR waypoint to fly. Um, I'll tell you what we could do just looking at the chart. I'll show you. So we're kind of up in this region, right? So what we could do, and I'm just going to adjust this so you guys can see a little bit better. But what I would do, what we could do is fly through this, through the valley up here until we hit a river, right? And then when we get the river, we could fly that river down and then go to Burley. But I'm just going to try to take a shortcut because we've got so much altitude on the airplane. Uh, 6,000 footers, we're fine. And I could zoom out even more and look at this tile. This 11.7 means that in order to get um, clearance, and to get terrain clearance, we just need to be at 11,700 feet, and we've cleared it. And we're at 13,300, so I am not worried about terrain. So if you're thinking, oh, crap, what are those, you know, what's that mountain range looking like? That's how you do it. The range on the aircraft? What are you saying? And it's Ja, right? Where are you from? Are you from the Caribbean? I'm just asking. I'm wondering. <laughs> All right. So our next waypoint, we're there in 15 minutes, and that's going to be Burley, Idaho. Now, one of the things that I really want to see is our NAV-2 kicking in. Right? can't tell you why well, I can't get my nav 2 to work here. I think if I really think on this. I 
Now this is going to be, it's going to tune in the Morse code. It's not what I want. This is obviously the audio panel. Intercom. No joy on that. Let's go back. Let's go to... Oh, look at this, the autopilot mode. That's pretty cool. I won't touch that. Just, I'm not touching it. Where are you? Anybody know? Monitoring one and two, that's what that means. I wonder if they enabled it or disabled it, because I should be able to see the VOR kick in. It's weird. That's what I'm trying to do, is flip the VOR this to come alive. I don't see anything, I guess, you know, no flags. It says Garmin, which means that we're on like GPS, you can see the HSI here. Do this flags is G GPS. It means we're on obviously a GPS radio. Oh, maybe, it, maybe that's nav one. Maybe nav two is hiding behind the yoke. Nope, that's our ADF. Ooh, a little stinker. I think that's what it is. It's just, it's just telling us we're on. We're on a GPS heading, which we are. So it's no big deal. Anyway, we're looking good, folks. So we're going to fly over Burley. We should see a river. And uh, that's it. We'll just sit back, relax. Enjoy the rest of the flight. We've got um, 41 gallons a piece on here. And there's our electrical. What I like about this right now is I can tell you we're looking at 83 gallons remaining. We've used 15 gallons. We plan to use about 45 when this is all said and done. But this is it. I mean, you just hang out. Look at look at the beautiful weather, the beautiful terrain here. A um, couple things to note if we're going to dead reckon. Dead reckoning means we're looking out the window and we're looking for points. You know, something to see. Um, again, this is a mountain range I was talking about before where we'd fly through it and we would go, we could just push the airplane and go north here, straight through that, and we could basically fly that all the way to the river and then follow the river in and we'll be good to go. Okay, um, a couple things to note we're just taking a shortcut. So, that's kind of what we're doing. We're over this mountain range here. And there's Oakley Municipality Airport. It's called. And that's basically just on this side of me, on, on our left. If we had a bail out, we could bail there. Um, I've got to get the... Uh, I've got to get the throttle and the prop figured out. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there we go. All right, so you can see we got a two flag, right? And this, it says Garmin GPS. Well, let's go ahead and move the OBS and see if we can get the, okay. So you see how this thing's spinning? This, this vertical bar, this is old school navigation, folks. So basically what we're doing is tuning in the Burley VOR. So if we fly that right here, dead dead center, okay, we're on basically the 300 degree radial. And now we're not on that radial. We're actually on the 120. So we're on the 120 degree radial to Burley. And we could see that by this flag that with the triangle up, that means we're two. And then, because we're going to the VOR, we're on the reciprocal. So we're on the 120 degree radial, which basically it's a, 
in all intents and purposes a laser beam. It's not, but it's a it's a radio signal that fires 360 degrees. Okay, so we're flying the one about 120, a little less than that. There we go, about 120 degree radial, but we're heading 300 thereabouts. And the mag compass is saying the same thing about 300. So. Um, what we're doing is basically flying this radial to Burley. If we flew this, you'll see this station passes, this passage. Um, and if you really wanted to go nuts, and we're in the IFR environment, let's hear Morse code. Now, I don't know if we're going to hear it because I've got the audio off in terms of in-game audio. So let's let's go ahead and see it. I think it would be fun to pick up the audio panel. Let's Let's try it. Don't know if it's going to work, but we could try it. Because, again, I have, like, the whole ATC sound thing off, so I don't know if we're going to get it. How's that? Going back to your comments. E3N, let me lock this. Uh, what's that front window for? The window box in front of you. Yeah, and Mike is right. That's a defrost. So when you're... 100% right. So when you are sitting there and you're icing up, hopefully it doesn't happen, but you get into icing conditions, we could go ahead and throw this right here where it says defrost. Right. Windshield heat. We could throw the windshield heat on. And this little section of the window is the one that's heated. So when we're landing, all we have to do is look out here and we could see. Now, it doesn't, it saves weight. That's why. You're probably thinking, well, why isn't the whole windshield like that? And they do that to save weight, right? All right and cost. You think about this, you know, that airplane. We would have to say, you know, a ton of money on cost if we, if we defrosted the entire windshield. Now, having said that, you could see there's two defrosters here and here on the FO side. So... Um, you still have a defrost section where you could defrost the windshield. You have you could have air blowing on it, um, but you could see if I throw the windshield heat on, it's just going to heat that one section up. That's exactly what that's for. Pretty cool stuff. All right, take a look at this Nav One. We're 26 miles away. This is old school navigating. 26 miles away from Burley. We're going two on the three zero zero degree radial. So everything is looking good. We're going to start seeing and start picking out a river. That's the next thing I want you to do is start looking at a river. Now I could see off the FO side. Can you see this right here? You see this body of water? That's the next thing I'm looking for. That body of water is going to be the Snake River. I guarantee it. I'm looking at my chart. And I'm showing you, I'll show you right now what I'm looking at. So if we zoom in here, we've got 26 miles of Burley. And right here, it looks exactly like that, doesn't it? Wide body of water here, and then it gets real thin. I'm getting some turbulence. I feel it in my seat. So that, if we zoom in, that's the Snake. So this is called the Snake River. So that river, that's what I'm saying, you could fly. I don't like using rivers usually as a VOR po uh, the VFR point because there's tons of them, but you could see there is no rivers, right? So if we looked around, I don't see any river, do you? No, and that's that's a pretty good thing to use on a, on a chart. Now, I could see it right here. See it cutting through? So that's when I know, all right, we're going to have to start turning westbound essentially we're going to hit burley vor or we could fly over burley vor and once we fly over the burley vor we know we got to start taking that west track essentially on the degree radial is it It'd be 97 miles but 200 277 degrees essentially and you would know that by doing plotting your course if we are in a vfr flight um, I'm going to go ahead and center this and show you. There's Burley, and there's that river we were talking about. So we've got the Snake River here. You can see it outside. You see that big body of water right there? There's the river. Kind of see my mouse. And 
there's that river that comes through. Now I'm looking for an airport. That's the next thing. I'm gonna move up my seat. I'm looking for an airport right now. So I've kind of got, you know, some dead reckoning going on. I'm looking for an airport. Now, obviously, we're flying GPS, so. Um, but this is what what you'd want to do is, is have the GPS help you, as you can still dead wreck it. And then we got Twin Fall VOR as well. That's coming up here. That's going to be on this side, basically west. How's our fuel? Fuel status is good. We've got 40 gallons on each side. We've got 80 gallons remain. We've used 18. Our fuel flow is sitting right at... Oh, a little higher now. We're burned. About 10, 10, 11 per hour. Cylinder head temperature is good. There's that river. Again, we could follow this river but it, it actually is going to end a little bit. It's going to get really thin. But you can see it through the windshield here. That's a tough one. Of, that's a real real tough VFR, uh, VFR waypoint to follow. Unless it's really, really prominent. Now, the Snake River is. It's, it's huge. So, the Snake River, if it's a big enough river, I mean, we could follow this river all the way to Boise, folks. But it's going to be tough because if we get to Mountain Home, we're going to have to turn up north. So, but we could fly this river to Mountain Home. That's pretty cool. Now, I'm looking for an airport. And I know the airport, looking at the chart, let's see. Let's pull up the chart. And let's see what we've got. Now, it's right on top of the river. The airport. Forget about the waypoint. But look at the airport here. We've got the river here. There's going to be a city called Burley, Idaho. And we're going to try to find that way that city and then we could find the airport okay so I've got city here there it is you guys see it right off the nose see it right here there's the airport so I know that's Burley and then we could start that turn westbound of 277 now it's gonna be different because of the winds but there's the Burley Airport so if we had problem we could bail out Burley Twin Falls is gonna be here Essentially, we're going to follow this river. Good night, Pops. We just took off. Good night, everyone. Good night, Dad. We'll see you, bud. All right. So what else do we want to know? Now, I, I, do, I do want to know something, and that's the, the weather there. So I'm going to open the airport and just check the weather at Burley, Idaho. Right now they're reporting 2 9 or 9 or 5. So this is a good spot to get in here and just kind of look. Yeah, and we're, yep, it's about where we are, about 2 9 or 9 or 5 right there. That's good. And we got about 11 miles to go. You can see there's the airport. It's pretty much right under the airplane. Um, and if I look at our VOR, you see this VOR? See how the needle's moving? It's getting sensitive because with the cone, we're approaching, every time we approach the station, it's going to get sensitive. So about five nautical miles away, you don't want to chase the needle because you're going to get into cone of confusion, it's called. So when we go outbound from Burley, all right, we'll try to track an outbound needle. This flag's going to shift from a to to a from. Okay, so you're going to see that go to a from, and then the airplane's going to start the turn. And I'm looking at 277, so I'm going to start my HSI to 277 knots. 270, about right there, is where we're going to turn. So we're heading, I'm going to throw our heading bug right about there, and see if it matches. We've got about 8 miles to go. Now I put the camera way high, just to see over the nose. Let's give you a good some some wing views here. Idaho, if you've never been to Idaho, it's filled with farmland. They do a lot of agricultural work there, as you can see from from the eye here. A ton of farming, and and that's Idaho. Lots of potatoes. They grow here, alfalfa, all sorts of stuff. Um, they're kind of known for that. Obviously, Idaho potato. If you've never been here, it's just full. And now the fun part. So I'm going to show you something 
really, really cool. And I want you to tell me why. And we're getting into it right now. We are in the Idaho Valley, as called. All right, I'm waiting for that turn. That's kind of why I'm looking at the window here. We're going to get to that burly. But we're in the Idaho Valley. And it stretches from basically Boise all the way to Yellowstone. So as we're in the turn here, I'm going to kind of look. You can see the city. There's Burley City. And you can see dense city here. Look over here. Nothing. Right? So that's another good VFR waypoint when you're flying to, to kind of look and say, oh, look, city and farmland. Big contrast. You can see that's populated. Cool stuff. All right, let's go back in the flight deck. And I'm going to show you. Recenter this. And we're going to follow the Elbrick Road, essentially this river. You can see the river right here. You see how it kind of gets a little weird, though? Kind of thins out. you got to be really careful if you're going to do that. And we're obviously not, but... We've got still two. We haven't passed the station yet at Burley. So we're not tracking that VOR. We're, we're tracking tracking the GPS. But you can see how the needle is now switching because we're actually going to cross the 1-2, which is basically to the south. So now we're crossing that radial. It's going to flip from a 2 to a from. And then we can track a whole different needle. And it's not going to be exact because we're not flying an exact radial outbound. Right? So when we get the station passage, which is pretty much right now, it'll flip. And we're getting some turbulence up here. Kind of expect that. Still on the two indication. There's the from. See now? The VOR went from two to a from. Okay. And then we can start tuning in. Alright, what radio do we need to hold here? Let's go ahead and start tuning in. Let's see what radio we're going to pass. Zero. Yeah, it's going to be like two seven something. There's your front flag. Let's see what we got. Ooh, there we go. Now again, we're just crossing these. We're not going to be able to hold it. Probably say two four zero when she settles, maybe. What'd you say, Mike? Mike said, "Good flight. Encourage me to get out of the West Coast and try other places." <laughs> um, encourages me to get out out of the West Coast. Yeah, I mean we're in the West Coast, but not really. But. Um, it's the West. All right, I want to show you something really, really cool now. We're getting into some turbulence. But I want to show you something. I'm going to ask you the question. Because this blows my mind. I mean, I'm a, I'm a geek when it comes to this stuff. I'm going to zoom out. We're in, the, we're in the Idaho area. This is called the Idaho um, Valley. Yes, I'm making this big. This is Boise. It's, we're almost there. So take a look at this. And if I zoom out, can you see a void of mountains in this area? Do you see how it goes like this? This is a little horseshoe. Why is that? So you've got mountains uplifting here, mountains uplifting here. It's like somebody came in and carved a path, a horseshoe path. Does anybody know what that is? 
and I can tell you that it's not the same here, right? We got mountains. This is all the this is all the Rockies. Very much different pattern. Okay, you got the the Was. This is the Wasatch, which is where we came from. This right here, you went in mountains. But if we come over here, it cuts as a horseshoe. And Mike, by the way, I'm flying this aircraft to Washington. Not tonight, but eventually I'm going to get to Orcas Island with it. I think it would be fun to fly up to Orcas, the beautiful, beautiful area up there. And we're going to get in some, uh, some airport. So when I have days off, we could come back here and fly um, up to, like, concrete. But anyway, does anybody know why this, this mountain range is cut? Completely cut. Let me know what you think. Um, and I'll show you there's a scientific thing that's going on here. It's pretty wild. And a big horseshoe goes goes from here, essentially. The start was here, all the way around. Was it man-made? What did it? That's what I want to know. Very interesting stuff. Boise is going to be fun. Sean says glaciers. It's a really good um, guess, Sean. Mike says horseshoe path. Maybe some ice moved across a long ago. Okay, what's the opposite of ice? Heat. This was a volcano. Really, really, really cool. Okay, so the volcano, the Yellowstone hotspot, the Yellowstone National Park is a volcano, folks. It's a hot spot. Okay, so underneath Yellowstone, which is right up here, by the way. Okay, and if I zoom into this, this is Yellowstone Lake. Right here. If I keep going, you can see Yellowstone Lake right here. All right, now watch this. You can see it's cut. This whole little chunk it's got no mountains on it. Well, it's 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 mountains, but it's not. You see, it's a big void right here. That's the blown top. The volcano blew the entire thing off. All right. So this volcano was right here. It started right over Boise, right in this area. Okay. Now, for millions and millions of years, and when I zoom out, you can really see it. Millions of years, the tectonic plates shifts. And moves, and we know it moves because it moves about one and a half degree a year, right? Because runways change, they change numbers. So as it shifts and rotates down, every time it rotates, and millions of years, by the way, it rotates, okay, it moves it down like this. The plates were moving over this hot spot. Hot spot is never moved. What moves is the land above it. Okay, so picture the land above this thing. I'm going to see if I can... If I can draw it. And, um... Let's see if I can... It says we're screen mirroring, but I don't see that happen. Let's try this again. Because a picture's worth a thousand words, and you can really see it when you zoom out and you go... Holy cow, I mean, look at this cut. And if you drive through Idaho, and especially around here, guess what land this is, folks? It's all volcanic rock. All volcanic rock. This whole thing. Um, stand by one. Let me see if I can get air server working. So this whole thing is volcanic rock. Okay, so it says that it's running. But I don't see it. try this again one more time see if I can't get it to work here there we go perfect all right I'm gonna go like this that's a perfect place to draw this so anyway let me take this down for a minute and show you so as the volcano moved uh, excuse me as the earth moved the plates shifted all right, this hot spot started way up here, and it just kept blowing its top. It kept erupting. All right, I mean, look at look at <laughs> look at how big this volcano is. This hot spot. It's a volcano. It's huge. It's a super volcano. It's, it's massive. Okay. Well, Yellowstone was the last place it blew. 
So guess what? Boise, Idaho at one point was Yellowstone. Looked exactly like it. And I'll show you what's really cool. And I'm a geek, so I'm a nerd when it comes to this crap. I love it. Um, what's really cool... Yeah, I had the wrong one. Here we go. So you have this... Let's see if I can paint this all right. You have the earth up here. Okay, so you've got these mountains. Okay. And underneath it, you have this chamber. Kind of looks like this. And then under this chamber, this is magma. All lava, okay? And all this heat rises. Okay, it rises. And then guess what it does to the mantle? And when I say the mantle, I'm talking about the earth here. Okay? Well, it cooks it. So as the earth cooks, it melts the rock. The rock then settles into the chamber. So the rock starts filling the chamber up. Well, what happens when rock melts? It becomes, you guessed it, magma. <laughs> That's all rock is. It's melted. So as it does this, Okay. As it becomes magma, well, this chamber starts filling up. It starts getting hotter and hotter and hotter, right? Melting more of the of the mantle. Okay, until it fills it up, and then once it fills it up, it's got nowhere to go except one place, and it's gonna blow its top. Okay, and, and it blows. It blows everything. Because this whole thing is going to exhaust out. And it, I mean, anything in its way is gone. And I'm talking a lot of, you know, half of the... Just, just let you know, they found the Yellowstone when it blew. And it blew about 600,000 uh, 600, years ago. About 620,000 years ago. When it blew... Okay. Getting into turbulence here. It um, it knocked. The ash was found all the way at the Gulf of Mexico. That's how big this thing is. It was. I mean, it's huge. Uh, we're in Jerome, Idaho now. There's going to be an airport right off. Sorry, a little geography lesson, but it's cool earth science I don't know, I find it really fun really fascinating it's amazing I read a whole book on this thing it's really cool. here's the airport see it there's Jerome Idaho right there Mike says Mount St. Helens burped a few years ago and made a big mess even sent ash up to BC and still rumbling a little today. Last time I checked, yeah, and that's what's crazy. You know, what's crazy about the Yellowstone volcano is it's it's an active volcano, like it's it's a super volcano, and, and boy is it active. Um, it it blows every. They estimate every about 600,000 years. Well, it's been 625,000 years. So it's due to go. Now, the cool thing that we have at Yellowstone, which we never had before, was um, we have sensors all over the place. So another thing that's scary is you have sublimation right and then you have lifting two things sublimation is decreasing lifting is the earth lifting so when you have volcanoes and under Yellowstone Lake this is wild too you want to know something wild so under Yellowstone Lake that's where we should have flown was West Yellowstone that's a pretty pretty planet place so 
Yellowstone Lake is situated. It's a lake, folks. We know that, right? <laughs> right. So you've got this lake here. Kind of looks. Oops. So bad. Kind of looks like a fan pad. Kind of like this. This Yellowstone Lake, right? From looking from the top down. Now, what happened was a ship sank in 1934. So 1934, you had a, a ship that sank, right? So I'm going to draw an under the water view of this thing. So you've got a ship. It was a steamboat because it used to give rides. This kind of little steamboat here that sank in 1934, okay, on the base of the lake. Right? And it was 30 feet underwater when it sank. So here's the top of the water level right there. From the water down, 30 feet. Today, where is this ship? Well, guess what? Today, this ship is on top of the water. It's above the water line. So I'll tell you this. Here's the ground. <clears throat> okay. Here's the water, and here's the boat. It's it's visible to the naked eye. You could you could drive up to it, not drive, but you could boat up to it. There's timber there it's sticking out. So you're telling me the ground rose 30 feet already. How does the ground do that? And how does the ground? It's called. That's called lifting. All right, when the ground rises like that, that means magma is pushing it. So there's a like that's why I said there's a ton of sensors in Yellowstone. They check they check everything in Yellowstone. They check everything from um, they check everything from you know sublimation, lifting, all that. Every every day there's sensors or there's um, all sorts of cool stuff for looking at the volcanic activity. It's it's insane. So cool. Max said lava fields. That's exactly right. <laughs> Max said used to be a truck driver. Drive from Salt Lake City up to the Boise is amazing. That's where we're we're flying to right now. It's so cool when you start looking. And you start getting into the, uh, we're getting into some cloud, folks. We're going to have to start descending here shortly. But you can see this river. See this river cut? That's from the, the Boise River that's, that's here. But um, this whole thing, it's super cool. We're almost there. We're almost at Boise. Uh, Boise's kind of experiencing some weather. Get there to be gone, but this whole you're looking at this valley. Like let's let's go on the outside here. This whole thing. See the mountains here? Like look at how big this thing is. This is the volcano. That's how big it is. Absolutely huge. That's what did this. It blew it to I mean the whole thing gone. It's amazing what it did. I mean, that to me blows my mind. And if you like, if you're driving in Idaho, just stop over, look in the lava. There's lava everywhere. It's a lava, lava fields for a reason. It's the whole thing's volcanic because of the Yellowstone volcano. That's what it is. It's amazing. But anyway, like I was saying, right now in Yellowstone, it's sublimation. It's been, it, it been in a sublimation phase for the last 10 years. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about consistent trend line. All right, trend down, which means that it's starting to, to decrease again. And that gets that gets their scientists going, scratching their head, going, whoa, the last, you know, 20, 30 years have been lifting. So the last 30 years have been lifting. And they're going, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're getting, they're getting, we're getting worried because they're like, man, if it keeps doing this, 
um, we're going to have a problem. And you can see the river right off the nose of the aircraft. That's still the snake. Um, and we're going to get into Mountain Home coming up. There's a VOR, I think. Yeah, 114.0. So let's go ahead and just tune that in. So I'm going to go 1140. Oops, I'm just going to push that on this side. I'll flip it back over. And that should give us a VOR count here. But to, to me, it's just it's just amazing how science, you know, how they know it. It's 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 pretty cool. Okay, what we could do is we're heading to Rec Mountain Home, but let's get into some. Got to look at some weather here. We're get, we're we're approaching Boise. We're getting close. Okay, we got about 15 minutes to Mountain Home, and then we're gonna turn north. Yeah, Max, that's pretty cool. That drive is beautiful up to Boise. Um, you know, that, that northbound track is, is really cool. Um, especially when you go through... Well, you're not going through... You probably didn't go through the Pocatello side. So you probably went up and then cut west. Um, so you probably went up I-15... You, did, you probably after Tremont you went westbound. It's probably what you what you did. Yeah, we drive through like when we go north, we go through Malad, Pocatello, up through that. But that thing is whole. That whole thing is a volcano. It's insane. It's super cool to study it on a map, and you can just see it. It's so clear, and you're like, wow, this thing blew a lot. It blew a lot. It blew. I think it blew eight times. It erupted. Um, since, you know, millions of years ago, but 625,000 years, it's due, they say. But the thing is this, now here's the issue, and I wouldn't say an issue, this is actually a good thing. They say this, did it melt, did the hot spot melt the mantle enough where there's nothing to melt anymore, right? So there's no new rock and that could be the case. So that's another good thing. Like, And you could see down here, we're looking, all of this is lava flow. All of it. Now it's erosion, but you start digging down, it's, it's all lava here. It's all lava flow. You're sitting on lava bed. It's amazing. Like this whole thing, you could see it through the windshield. See the, see the mountain here and the mountain here? This whole thing is, was the Yellowstone Volcano. And it erupted about eight times, but they're, they're thinking, the scientists are saying, all right, did it, did it erupt enough where it's not melting the mantle anymore? That's a really good question because it's still moving. The plates are still moving, right? But, but basically, is it, it's moving at such a slow pace. It might take, you know, we're not, we're, we probably won't see it erupt in our lifetime or my kid's lifetime. Um, there would be a lot more signs. Um, but having said that, there's new fissures in the rock all the time. Right? So, like, a geyser that might have been, you know, dormant forever is not anymore because of a fissure in the rock that hits the plume. And then that just, it's just so much heat. It's amazing. The place is beautiful. It's just amazing. It just blows my mind. When I was there, I was like, what? We were just there in June, but I was, I couldn't believe it. I didn't know any of this until I picked that book up and I started, I just read the book. I'm like, I would read this thing. It was really cool. All right, we're going to the airports. Let's get to the aviation side of things. That's what, it's kind of VFR does. You could kind of, kind of do some research. I like that. Where are we going? All right, Boise right now, weather, three, uh, zero, three, zero, seven, so nice winds there, 10 miles visibility. Got a few clouds at 8,000, broken at 12, so we might have to drop down below that. We'll see if we interfere with any terrain, but right now we won't because we're, we're in crystal clear, basically. Max says, you're right, it's amazing anyone not living in the West. 
needs to go up there and see it, especially on the way to Yellowstone. Or Coeur d'Alene. Yeah, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho is gorgeous too. I'm surrounded by a half dozen volcanoes only. St. Helens is rumbling. <laughs> yeah. Never seen it from the air. Great job on that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool when you can see it from the air and you really see from the map. You just look at the map. You're like, holy crap, the volcano just caught this whole thing into this. It's amazing. Amazing. And the lava flow. Guys, you don't understand. Like, when you go to Yellowstone, we're talking hundreds of feet of mountain. It was all volcano. It's, I mean, it's all lava. All lava flow. A hundred feet. That's how thick this thing is. I mean, I just looked up. Like, you got to be kidding me. 100 feet in the air. All, all lava. That is cool. And it went all the way down to Pocatello. That's, I mean, even further. Like, w when you're in Pocatello and you see lava, that was from the eruption of the, of the Yellowstone volcano. It's crazy. Blows my mind. Just, it's just the immense power and energy that that thing has. It's, it's super cool. All right, but now you know every time you look at a sectional chart, which I've got, by the way, or you look at our, you know, you open your Navigraph chart up and you can look and you see it cut crystal clear, you're going to say to yourself, I know it did that. That was the Yellowstone Volcano. See, you learned something on this channel. I hope. I hope he learned something. That's the whole point. Oh, here it is. It's right in front of my face. So I've got a sectional chart. Um, I love, I have it, obviously we have it on our, we have our, our Navigraph chart open because I could show everyone. We're getting a mountain home right now. But I could see right here, you can't see it, but I could see the sectional chart here. And if I open it, right, you could see where it starts cutting it. It's, it's wild. It's pretty cool. Not as clear as the other one is, but it's pretty neat. All right, this is class Charlie. This is class Charlie airspace. Mountain home is uh, up to 5,500 feet, so we're way above that. Okay, we've got. Uh, I'm gonna open my charts just to look at what Boise's doing in terms of weather. I think it's uh, two runways there. I'm very familiar with this airport. Ten right. I'm assuming we're gonna be landing the ten. Uh, wind zero three zero, yeah, seven. We'll probably have to land tens. No big deal. Let's see, does Boise? Yes, it does. Boise has digital latest. Right now, Boise's reporting right, zero one zero at seven. We're gonna start descending, folks. Ten miles of clear skies right now. Wow. We're gonna get a good view of Boise. 0107 knots, 10 miles visibility, clear skies, 26 over 13, altimeter 29087. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll prep for landing here, 29087. I'm gonna drop this down just a little bit. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna come over here, we'll go recenter re that. Mountain Home is just ahead. I'm trying to look for an airport. I see the airport, see the airport right there? There it is. We could go ahead and turn northbound if we wanted to now. Uh, it's going to be a pretty sharp turn to the north. Looks like 340 degrees on the heading. And uh, kind of take us that way. But you can see there's the Snake River. We're following it. It's pretty. Man, that's pretty, isn't it? Gosh, that's gorgeous. Pretty country up here. What are we doing on fuel? We got 30 gallons in the tanks right now. We got 68 gallons total. We used 30. Wow, we, it was the plan to use 40, so that's really good. Yeah, Yellowstone National Park is amazing. It's amazing. If you've never been there, you've got to go. It's it's mind blowing. And the thing is, every national park is beautiful, but Yellowstone is the king of the crop, right? That takes the cake. Because there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And it, yeah, it, the scenery is beautiful. The wildlife's cool. But let me tell you something. What's under you is really, really cool. It's super cool. All right. 
So Mountain Home's up here. Um, let's go ahead and look at the chart, the supplemental chart, which is going to be right here. So I'm going to look at Boise just, just, just for the heck of it. That's going to be in Idaho. And I got the wrong one. Dang it, it's on the other side. So let me see what we're going to do here. Let's pull the chart open. Wrong way. I love the smell section of the chart. It's over here. It's lighted. We know that. We're going to go ahead and make right traffic. Okay, so we're going to land. Um, we'll make right-hand traffic. Okay, so we'll get a we'll get a good um, shot of it visually. Uh, you know, I didn't take a picture of this. I'm going to take a picture of this. I, this whole time I've been chatting. I don't have a picture. There we go. I hope you guys like the Seneca. Uh, you're thinking about maybe you're thinking about purchasing it. Hopefully, it gives you a good a good reason to do so. Because I really love this airplane. I think I think it's a lot of fun to fly, especially with this GPS and it. it's gorgeous. All right, folks, we're um, we're about look like 21 miles away. Basically, there's a couple of MOAs, so I'm trying to I'm trying to watch the MOA area. So you're thinking, well, why can't we just cut through here, Jason? It's because of the MOA. So we'll hit this mountain home, and then we're gonna go with this this here. We'll start our descent here coming up. We got about a few miles to go, so I'm not too worried about it. Hope you folks, there's Mountain Home straight ahead. See it? Right over the nose. I can see the runway. That is an Air Force base. So, 5,500 feet is where the uh, airspace starts. We're still in good, but you can see the base of the clouds coming. It's starting to get a little lower on us, so we'll kind of might have to force it down just a little bit, which I will. I'll start a descent shortly. It's 21 miles from Mountain Home up to the next. And I reckon what we could do is we could kind of take it off of GPS here. We'll fly a heading once we get a visual of Boise. And by the way, folks, I can zoom all the way in and check this out. That is super cool. So our uh, Navigraphs AMDB here, super cool. So 10 right is what we'll land on. And we're probably gonna have to taxi on the, gotta figure out where the GA side, I think it's up here. So when we land, we could get off on Gulf or we can get off here leisurely and then just kind of go over here and shut it down. I do know that this is the other side, the military side, we don't want to be on there. Oh, here it is, GA parking. So we're going to go on the other side. Maybe we can get off here and then go over here. I've never been to that side of the airport. That's pretty cool. So that's kind of the plan anyway. All right, let's tune Boise, 113.3. if we can't get it. We could get it, right? You see how strong that came in? All right, let's spin this, spin this part, spin your part around and around here. We're probably going to be, all right, there we go. Right now, if we turn into it, it'll be good. But you can see we're going to be flying right over the top of Mountain Home and then headed over to Boise. Let me get your comment here before 
Sean says, you guys think you might pick up the Comanche in the future? Oh, man. Um, I might. I, I, I don't know. Um, Mike says, we are in Canada. Can't get paper charts from the U.S. anymore. Unless I'm lying. Love to get it. Brick and mortar. Yeah, I have to get a brick and mortar. I got you. Uh, I have this twin since they fixed the API. All right. Okay, good. Do you think you might pick up the Comanche? Maybe. I mean, the Comanche is a nice airplane, but you know, I'm looking for a little more speed. So maybe a twin. Um, newer to the channel, so please bear with me. Do you take re requests on airports with these GA airplanes? Yeah. Deer Valley would be cool to see. Closer to home here in Arizona. Gotcha. Yeah, we could do that. I mean, uh, normally we don't, on this channel, we fly, you know, Coastal Airways is the virtual airline that, uh, I, it's my, my airline I made up. Uh, and it's, you know, obviously looking at the channel, it's, we very much simulate part 121 operations or pilots go through a lot of training to get in um, I don't know if you know about it but that's kind of what we do day in day out but um, once in a while when we have a when I have to have a three day off and we simulate part 117 so in, in real life I wouldn't be you know you got three days off so I start again on Monday you know, I'll start flying Monday again um, a trip and we're doing a northeast run so you guys will see that coming on Friday. I don't know where we're going to be. And then why we're flying this far north is because of that MOA area. You can see the MOA right there. If I zoomed into it, ground to 22,000 feet. Probably not active, but you don't want to mess with it, right? You, you can see if it's active, but um, I'm not going to chance it, right? I do know we're going to have to start descending. So I can see the cloud. I see we're above the cloud. So we'll start have we'll start we'll start descending down just a little bit. So we'll go vertical speed here, and I'm just gonna start pushing it down just a little bit. All right. Now when I do that, you don't want to shock cool the engine. So what you'll do is you'll pull. See that manifold pressure just kind of just clink because of the engine. So, I have to get used to this stupid thing. I'll pull back manifold uh, RPM just a little bit, and then I'm going to drop manifold pressure. Just a little bit. There we go. I want to get it about right there. Okay, good. Oops. that I don't want you to center me there there we go okay let me get your comments uh, return flight today no no way no way <laughs> um, once you get the Comanche you don't want to fly anything else yeah yeah um, Sterile cockpit soon. That's exactly right. Um, and not hypoxia. So. Mike says funky. Mountain Home Air Force Base is where the 366 fighter wing is located. Hence the MOA. Exactly. And you just want to stay away from that area. You know, you don't want to be prancing around in there. But what I'm going to do is clear that MOA kind of just start looking for Boise it's gonna be over there uh, just trying to make sure we get below the clouds we got to stay 500 feet below the cloud for 
for legal purposes to stay VFR. Yeah, so the Comanche, I, I mean, I saw the thing in when we were at FS Expo, and it looked awesome. And I'm with you. Um, they did such a good job. The A2A does a great job, right? I mean, they do a, a ph phenomenal job on their uh, aircraft. But if I'm going to fly, I want to fly. Like, I love the Seneca. The Seneca is beautiful. But, yeah, it's the A2A, you can't beat it. Um, just the immersion factor alone is pretty cool. I'm going to try to sneak in here. I'm going to try to take a heading. Kind of get midfield downwind. How's that? Yeah, well, we're, we're passing through. We're coming through 10,000 feet. Just want to make sure we get through these clouds and below them a little bit. Hold on, let me see that comment here. Uh, woo, 366, yep. This coastal airways, airways thinking about smaller aircraft like the Saab 340 or the Brayer. No, we're not. Um, Kodiak is awesome too, almost. What is that? The Kodiak is awesome too. Almost forgot. Yeah. Um, so coastal airways, the plan for coastal, the, the, the smallest aircraft we have in our fleet is a CRJ 700. So that's the smallest airplane. All right, guys, we're pretty much clear. So I'm going to take it off. We're going to go heading select. And what's so cool about this is I can just adjust this heading bug. And you could see where we're going to go. All right? And that's going to put us on a nice downward track. So we're going to go heading select. On. Now just, there we go. Okay, now we're still descending. There's 9,000. We're going to send to about 8 stop. There we go. This reservoir below us here, it's called Indian Creek Reservoir right there. I've got an airport straight ahead. That is not Boise. Very well could be Boise. Let me see what we got. We're looking straight at it. That's Boise. Dead ahead. So the airport elevation, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the airport chart just so I have a reference. Airport elevation right now is... Um, sitting at twenty eight seventy two. So we're looking at three thousand three thousand eight hundred on traffic pattern. Alright here comes eight thousand so we'll keep the starting to descend. Looking good. Temperatures are looking good so I want to make sure everything is good to go there. There's eight thousand folks get to about five and then I'll kind of hold off on the descent. We're going to follow this road up pretty much on VFR flight plan. Obviously VFR now we're off the GPS. We're just kind of looking out the window. All right, as we get lower, I'm going to start pushing my fuel up just a little bit. There we go. Get that mixture back in there. Get that, that fuel flowing back in the engine. I'm going to go ahead and throw the uh, landing light on. There we go. Fuel pumps will come on. They say clear. I don't know where they're coming up with clear. It's not clear here. One zero right. We'll plan on that. Make a, a right downwind. How's that? There's 7,000. See out the wings? We sent to about six. 
stay away from those mountains and they'll eat us alive. <laughs> All right, there's 7,000. We're gonna go ahead and start slowing up on that descent. We'll start leveling up about 6,000, maybe get a little closer to Boise. Once we get in that MSA area, I know we're all right. I got the airport right there, it's straight ahead. Cool beans. Let's go 5,000. Um, let's do it the right way. We're gonna do a 45. And we'll do a 45 degree entry into the traffic pattern. We'll make right traffic. Maintain about 4,000. There's the airport. So we're going to fly a little bit further on the downwind and then we will uh, take the thing off of autopilot. Here comes the mixture. Mixture is full rich. Getting into bumps. There it is. I was going to say, I lost sight of the Nang Airport. I've got it. Obviously, we would have called, we would have called air traffic control and said, hey, uh, they would have had us. We would have called them already. We were in class Charlie airspace at 4,600 to 6,900. So we're right in the middle of their airspace. All right, let's make a downwind. So they'll say 45 downwind right, right traffic. Roger. So we're going to go 45 degrees right into it. We're still descending. We want to descend down to about 3,900 feet. We're going to go right at the airport here. Props full. Okay. Manifold pressure's too low, that's why. Sorry about that buzzer. That's the gear horning warning. All right, we're going to turn in. Right there, dead at the tower. See, that's about a 45 degree. There's four coming up to 4,000 feet. And we'll stop right here soon. And we're in traffic pattern altitude. stop that stupid buzzer. Okay, folks, we're going to fly right out the trap, the tower. It's about a 45 degree. When I see it, we'll start slowing the aircraft down. And then um, let me get my charts out here. My chart, my uh, approach. They're going to be flying a... Uh, There's, there we go. I'm going to just level off right now. Right there. We're going to hold that right there. Altitude hold. Now let me just look at our landing checklist. We're looking at uh, airspeed about 90 knots, okay? That's kind of what we're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and take it all off. Okay, it's my plane. Now the autopilot is off. Yeah, I've got it. I've got full control of the aircraft now. Um, just want to make sure that we're not going to descend too much, so put my seat up. Just get a little closer. There's the control tower. Looking good. We're right where we need to be. And I'm going to start slowing the airplane down just a little bit. You're going to get the horn. Okay, we're going to make our downwind turn.
right hand traffic's tough because you got to be able to see all right see where we're within that 100 foot range flaps one one notch i should say okay the runway here is zero one so what i like to do Sorry, hang on. Is put it right, put my heading bug on it, because then I could square it up. And I'll take a peek out the window and look. Okay, flight director's coming off. Shut it all off. I don't need it. Uh, looking good. If we keep descending, we're going to be eating it. get a beam looking at the beam and the numbers here I still see it it's when you need an FO to say <laughs> we're a beam uh, we're looking really good now folks stable airplane there's a beam let's go and turn base We'll drop gear, turn base. All right, here we go. Turn the base, gear down. Ninety knots on the speed. We'll start our descent here. Not too much though. Still, you want to start descending. Okay. About 90 degrees. Roll out, kind of take a peek. Hopefully you could square this thing off. Okay, I see it. I'm a little scawampus, to tell you the truth. I'm going to hold that right there. I don't want to descend anymore. Kind of a weird angle at it. I got a visual. Well, I, I, of course I have a visual, but... Okay, gear down. Gear is down. I already threw it down. Flaps coming in. Another notch. 90 knots. Full flaps. And there we go. We'll start our descent. We'll throw the power back a little bit. Everything is full forward. Whoa, turbulence, baby. See the river? That's cool. Okay, gear down three green, flaps are set. Since we're a little bit low, so we'll go ahead and correct that. Remember, you're not flying a 737. Holy smokes, we're getting throttled here. So I want to cross control here. Try to maintain that center line best I can with uh, rudder pedals that are screwy right now. All right, let's get on the brakes. Tap those brakes. Welcome to, oh, you hear the Morse code now? You hear it? I couldn't hear it over over the engines. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go uh, echo. Welcome to Boise, folks. That was a ton of fun. I enjoyed that flight. I don't know if you did, but I sure did. I always like flying the uh, look at ahead of us. Now that is cool. Nothing like A10s staring you down. Let's pop the window. 
Now we'll start the fun cooldown process. Go ahead and turn off the uh, landing light. Uh, turn off the radar. Flaps coming up. Look at the A-10s, that is super cool. Hang on, let me, get a, let me get going over here. I'm getting carried away. That's sweet. And the airplane, it just, I gotta do some control here. Crosswind control, because the wind's pushing us. Idaho Air Guard right there, that's cool. Lots of fun. All right, looks like GA parking's coming up. <laughs> the airplane's going nuts. Wow. Yeah, I don't have the rudders, obviously, for this airplane yet. Super cool. Let's go ahead and throw the taxi light. This is the GA side. This is a really... I'll shut off the uh, Morse code here in a minute. right there we got GA parking all over here all right brakes coming on let's go ahead and shut down the um, just gonna keep the RPM about 800 feet 800 and I'm gonna shut off the stupid force code Uh, once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and throw this on standby. Uh, that's it. So what do we burn? We burn 36 gallons of fuel. We'll throw both pumps off. We're gonna go ahead and throw the nav light off, and then our fins. We're just gonna put the strobe on the fin. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the um, radio. Pop the door open. That's what's so cool about a Piper. You can pull the door open. And the air is blowing on you with the engines. Pretty cool. Uh, shut down number one first. Okay, that's a good stop. I'm going to shut down that. And we got an hour and 48 minutes. Pretty cool. You hear that? That's my seat. <laughs> that's, that's super cool. All right. Let's go in and shut it down. Mags are off. Alternator off. Batteries off. That was fun. That was super fun. I enjoyed that. That was a cool trip. You know, um... You know, I gotta get the. I get the only thing I gotta do is get my stupid, my stuff ready because it's, you know, it's not. Uh, we're gonna plug it up, get the airplane all sorted out. What's cool about this is I can come up here to the, the flight deck. We'll go ahead and throw these to off. Right, cut that to off. And then we could come over here and then what's really neat about this is that we could say, all right, we're going to go ahead and um, put the static elements on it, which is neat. 
and then we can go outside and you can see all that's modeled real nice but they should have the door open so there we go now it's beautiful <laughs> look at that huh where we want to be I want that terminal picture in there nice all right that's pretty fun anyway I hope you enjoyed it let me get to your comments and then we could um, talk about what we're doing next week just, just as nice scenery that's right uh, thank you it is, it is pretty is this the fancy GTN or the free one I'd like, I would like to try this flight. Yeah, it's um, that's the the GTN you have to buy. That's the add-on for it. But there's a free one out there too, for sure. Um, with proper flight planning. Yep, that's what landing rate app you're using. Um, it's called Fly Live Studio. That's the landing app I'm using. I don't know what it was. What was the landing? Was it good or was it hard? I don't even know. Uh, Max is beautiful. Nice scenery. Nice at 10 Warthog. An 810 Warthog. Yeah, that's right. That's stock scenery. This is not stock scenery. This scenery is from, I believe, Orbix. Orbix has Boise. I don't know who did it, but it's beautiful. Like, it's it's gorgeous, right? They did such a good job with it. Um, we fly here with Coastal Airways. So I flew here a couple, what was it, about a month ago, maybe? Or two months ago, I flew into Boise with the 737. So you'd have to look at one of the videos. I did a full, it was a full schedule. I think I did a full day. We went Salt Lake to um, Jackson Hole, Boise, out west. And we went to, um, from Boise to Monterey. And I think we went Monterey up to um, Vail, Colorado, and then back to Salt Lake. It was, it was a lot of fun. Did you say your rudder pedals are giving you an issue? Um, Sean, no. They're, it's just they're not... The setting on the rudder pedals is for 737. I haven't I haven't got the, the rudder set for the Seneca. So I have to do another profile. I just haven't had time to do it. Oh, that is also vertical sim. Okay, there's an also vertical sim. I think that this was that that this is vertical. Sim. I can't remember if this is vertical sim or not. I know. I think I picked it up at. No, I I don't. I can't remember. I don't know if this is vertical sim or if this is the Orbix one. I don't know. But anyway, cool looking airplane. It reminds me of a Duke. I can't wait till a Turbo Duke comes out. That is really, that's what I want to get. Because that's a fast airplane, so. Oh man, you you guys hiring? <laughs> Sounds like you guys are close to me. Um, well, we, um, are we hiring? Well, that's an interesting question. Yes and no. So, you could go to flycoastalairways.com if you're interested and read about us first. Um, you go through an interview process. It's a big deal. It's a, it's a it's a it's quite a process to get through training, but it's self-paced. And if you wanted to do it within a month, I, I mean, we just had a guy finish training in a month and a half. I mean, it was done. Normally, it takes about six months, but you could get it done quick if you like, or you know. If you, if you if you want to take your time you could do it in six months but right now we're kind of kind of waiting that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply if you're interested you need 200 vats some hours to apply you need to have a good command of the 737 uh, all that stuff but let me know that you you know you saw me on stream and you know you're interested but first things first read the website go to flycoastalairways.com and check us out also if you haven't yet um, on the bottom here, there's a, you know, a uh, Instagram link. So like, if there's a delay in flights or something like that, I'm always gonna go on Instagram threads and say, hey, I'm delayed. Like yesterday, I couldn't do it. I was, 
I was you know, something came up and I was stuck. Um, but anyway, that's it. Better than the 414, the Duke. Um, I I like a turbine Duke. I love it. I love beach. I love you know their airplanes are great. Uh, having said that, I haven't flown that in real life. I've flown this airplane in real life. It's very heavy. <laughs> it's a tank. It feels like a truck. It flies like a, it, it, it. It really does. Very heavy on the controls on this aircraft. But, uh, you know, it's what you expect from a Piper. It's, it's really cool. Cool airplane, though. But I'm, I think somebody's doing a Turbine Duke for it for 2020. So I'm interested in seeing that and how that goes. Um, I probably won't do another GA flight for quite a while. Um, but if we do do one, we're going to probably leave off of here in Boise. Or um, I, I will probably take this airplane up to Washington, like Orcas Island or something like that. We'll see. Um, like I said, I don't, I, I don't usually fly this airplane often. Uh, but I do. It's super fun. So I do like it. But next week, folks, look for a 737 line flight with Coastal. I'll be... You know, flying the line again, and um, probably up in the northeast somewhere, we're going to be doing the Bar Harbor run. So we go LaGuardia up to Bar Harbor, back to LaGuardia, back to Bar Harbor. That's day one. And then day two, we go from Bar Harbor, LaGuardia down to uh, St. Thomas. So you might see that run. You might see either LaGuardia, Miami, or Miami to St. Thomas. So it might be one of those. St. Thomas runs fun. It's it's, it's super fun. All right, and then we uh, the day three, we're on a night flight. We go from St. Thomas up to Miami, and then we go from Miami to Birmingham, Alabama, and back. And it's pretty late at night. I think it's like I think we land at like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at midnight, right around there. Anyway, yeah. Well, thanks, folks. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like this kind of content, let me know if you're re watching the rewind or whatever. And let me know if you want to do some more GA flying. You know, hopefully on a day off we could we could do some more GA stuff, and I could get this thing worked out with the, the prop and the throttle it was all reversed or something stupid. All right, until next time, keep the blue side up and the brown side down. You guys have a great week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.